This is Free Talk Live. You are listening to the live Sunday night edition. And yes, we are live here on this Sunday evening. As Free Talk Live is live every single night of the week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can find us always at freetalklive.com for more info. With you tonight, it's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Free Talk Live is a show that's a little bit different from other talk radio shows. First of all, we're live on a Sunday night. But second of all, you've got the opportunity to call in and bring up any topic that's on your mind. We don't uh, restrict you to only the topic we're talking about, although you can certainly talk about that if you wish. You, you also have the opportunity to bring up anything that's on your mind. And the way to do that is just call us at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. Call and bring up anything that's on your mind tonight. You can also use Skype to get in touch with us, and the Skype line is lrn.fm. That's our name on Skype. All right, gentlemen, are you guys ready to start? I have uh, something that I definitely want to talk about with you, and that is the topic of drones, something that's very interesting to those who value freedom, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And this is coming from Forbes. It's a slightly older article, um, but recently there's been a lot of movement as far as the legislation that this is talking about. And it's drone users are largely silent regarding FAA rules that may limit flights. Uh, Users of consumer drones and model aircraft aren't afraid to share their ideas and imagery in social media, which is true. I mean, lots of people are sharing like drone pictures of their weddings on Google Plus and all that. I've certainly seen that recently. Uh, Surprisingly, it's a great way to take care of getting those uh, those shots. Right. It's oh, yeah. It's expensive to get a nice high shot. Uh, Sometimes you can get it of your house shot. You mean picture. picture, Because they're also used for bombs yeah, shot, yeah. drones shots. are good at multiple yeah. shots it seems, <laughs> okay. sadly yeah just to clarify but- if you want a bird's eye view picture of your wedding and people seem to want every kind of picture of their wedding so bird's eye is not off the table then you know previously you'd had to get a helicopter or an airplane to do it and that would have been extraordinarily expensive yeah now you can get some you know, hobbyist with a with a with a remote control helicopter who goes up there and takes a takes a little picture. Absolutely, yeah. There's actually someone that we know here in New Hampshire who has a business where he does aerial photography for real estate using drones that he's engineered himself. Yeah, he gets some heat for that too. But uh, I want to talk about this heat first. Uh, surprisingly, though, these users have been largely silent when it comes to protecting their hobby from pending Federal Aviation Administration rules, rules that threaten to curtail many uses of the exciting new devices. Drone users are oftentimes quick to comment when a government official with the FAA or the National Park Service tells them they can't use their cool toy somewhere. Realtors, photographers, and other the potential- FAA, the FAA, seriously, they yeah. are flying, they, right? They, they, okay. <laughs> Okay, that to me, that's kind of like the FAA regulating kites or flying paper airplanes. You know, I mean, they're just. I don't so know. Small I'm not seeing a not... whole lot of kites anymore. I don't know if they... maybe they got to <laughs> they them. got to them. <laughs> but I mean, right? Like they don't yeah. go very high. They're very small. There's no possible way they could interfere with like an airplane, really. I have never heard of a uh, you know person with a remote control helicopter who has gotten it so high you're actually talking about it's being sucked up into a jet engine. Yeah, it would seem like it would be unlikely that it would hurt like a pass. A, a, what do you call it? A small engine plane? Yeah. You know, just a prop plane. It would seem like it would just get torn to hell. And I can see how it gets caught in a jet engine, and we've got problems, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> just well, fuck. well, what about birds? I mean, jet. Airplanes and oh, don't you know, worry, we'll legislate planes. those birds soon enough. If they could <laughs> they legislate birds, to. they would. Yeah, that's coming. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like during the takeoff and landing, they must encounter birds sometimes, and they, I'm sure there's some way to deal with well, it. Well, I, I think the concern they might have is pretty legit. I mean, ISIS might buy model airplanes and use them. I'm kidding. Of I'm course. not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt for a second. Well, that, that uh, certainly is a tactic the U.S. government uses on. Uh, people in the Middle East. I don't know about ISIS in particular, but um, I, maybe that is a legit concern. Well, no, they just I... buy them and fly them into the jet engines near airports, I would think would be their biggest thing. But consider no. that they do have some control over what goes on in an airport, right? Like they tear down houses within a certain distance. Uh, you know, I mean, they eminent domain them sometimes, yeah. But jets get pretty high pretty quick. Mm-hmm. So if they have some kind of buffer zone around an, an airport where big jets come and go, it seems like it handles most of the problems. You would think, yeah. 
Well, let's hold that thought for just a moment and talk with uh, Brian real quick here in Wyoming. Hey, Brian, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, Stephanie, Mark, and Brian. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, as far as you guys are talking, I, I was really calling about something else, but when it comes to the drones, um, I actually have a client who he owns like a RC plane store, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a terrorist. Uh, we don't call him a client anymore. He's a terrorist. <laughs> Well, well, no, but actually, he does work with the government for his side job and travels around the country working on drones. And um, he, he says he says it's not really as scary as it seems, but I kind of think so. But, anyways, I don't well, know people always about. downplay the uh, the role government's going to play in regulation, and it creeps. They don't call it mission. Cre- they don't call it mission sprint. It's mission creep generally, mm-hmm. and it's an over time, gradual thing. Yeah, it's just a it's a chilling effect. It's crazy because, I mean, you can make these – they have these little drones that, I mean, they look like um, little butterflies or like little bees and stuff. And seriously, and I don't know, you know, you could put some sort of like ricin powder or something inside of one of those and fly them in anywhere undetected. Well, you know, actually you bring up kind of an interesting point, and and it's interesting because it can't necessarily be disproven that these don't exist, and that is uh, mosquito drones, as they're called. Uh, and you can look yeah, this exactly. stuff up. I mean, and, and it's literally things the size of a mosquito with a camera on them. Uh, you know, and I, I bring up this case often just because... Battery with, power. That yeah, seems like that, that would be my biggest concern You there. don't need it for long, though, perhaps, to get what you need. I mean, you know, whatever that happens to be. But, I mean, you can't disprove that these really exist, especially when you can go on Snopes, which that's their whole business, is making sure that these conspiracy theories get knocked out of the water. This is one that doesn't get knocked out of the water. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, like with the NSA and other stuff, I mean, encryption is meaningless when you have a camera that can take a picture of the screen you know well and also you have a little drone that can drop like a little bit of a powder or it could even inject it into you because if you saw a mosquito biting you you wouldn't really think twice oh wow that that would be like horrible huh yeah it's pretty scary so uh did you what did you want to say about drones well, I actually didn't even call in about drones. And oh, you okay. Guys made me about what I actually called in about. Um, sure. Oh, no. Okay, here's what I actually called in about. You, yeah, you guys are going off really good on drones. Is the Keene, um, New Hampshire pumpkin riot that's <laughs> all over. Like, no, seriously, um, it's, it's, on, um, it's on AP. It's on Fox yeah. News. I listen to a lot of Fox, ra- you know, like a lot of talk radio. And you guys are on AP. You guys are on Fox News. I assume maybe Ian might even be on, like, the radio tonight, like, but- defending this. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to hear them. Um, your thoughts on that. So I'll hang up and, um, yeah, thank, go ahead and thanks for the call, it. Brian. I appreciate your thoughts tonight. I was thinking someone might call in about the Keen Pumpkin Fest tonight. Yeah, so, the, the, so I, let's preface this by saying Brian and I are probably the worst people to talk about this because we don't even live in Keen. We just came right. in today and uh, this is just for the show and it was after all the action had already happened. So Mark, why don't you tell us what well, happened? Well, I think this is one of those interesting things about location. People will think, will say, you know, hey, have you ever been to Europe? Uh, or, you know, they'll, 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 if you're talking about something, have you ever been to the Middle East? Well, yes, I have. But really, what is that relevant about my conversation? So I walked around a few uh, Holy Land spots. I went to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher and uh, the Church of the T- Nativity. And, and that doesn't really give me – the fact that I was an, in those places gives me no validity and no gravitas to talk about Middle Eastern policy. The fact that my money is being spent on it does. Um, about Keene – I know nothing about this riot other than what I've been told by other people. Right. Ian was there. He happened to be there when it started with this bottle throwing. He got some uh, footage. He claims that the cops were a block away acting like they didn't see anything. Ian's in there on a roof taking pictures of these people whip- whipping bottles at each other. So let's back up just a little bit. Keene is a city in New Hampshire where we're broadcasting from this radio show. Yep. And uh, every year they have an event called Pumpkin Fest, which is just a fall celebration. It's become increasingly militarized in past years with the presence there of were snipers, snipers and, again a, this year. and a Bearcat attack vehicle. This year, there some college students started riding, but it didn't appear to be for a political reason. It was just kind of drunken college students, as I understand it. Alcohol was involved. And there's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. <laughs> we'll get back into this. 855 450 free Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. 
a hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country, with a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers. How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. This is the live Sunday night show with Stephanie and Brian and Mark. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call in and bring up anything that's on your mind tonight at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or you can also call us on Skype. LRN.FM is our name on Skype. And those are, of course, the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines for you. You can go get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. There, we have BuzzBox Coffee. And it's 100% organic 
top 1% grade Arabica beans and shade grown. Shade grown is really important if you've got sort of that acid refluxy thing. It's also good for the environment. It's good for songbirds, too, by the way, that use that environment. Uh, they <laughs> head down there winter, thinking about those things right now. Buzzbox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees. So after you get your free pound of coffee, you can continue to get your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. But when you do, it's you're helping us to give micro loans through Kiva to people around the world. That's what's really important to us in this uh, this partnership is that we're able to help people. And you can help them too. With the coffee you drink normally, it's coffee.freetalklive.com. It's not the coffee you drink normally. If you drink coffee normally, Upgrade your coffee and help people, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Go get your coffee, free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. Let's go right to the phones. We were kind of talking about Keen Pumpkin Fest and how things got a little bit out of hand over the weekend. <laughs> but first, Ken is on the line in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, Ken. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How you doing? Doing wonderful tonight. What's I, on your uh, mind? Was, uh, while you were, I, I just got off work and I turned the radio on. You guys talked about drones. And I just last week, I got done watching a, a documentary on Netflix called Rise of the Drones. What of the drones? And, uh, it, by R-I-S-E. Oh, oh rise. rise of the yeah. Drones. Okay. Okay. Kind of a, a playoff of the last Terminator movie, which is Rise of the Machine. I think they didn't say that. That was the, that's what I took from it. Sure. But it was they just they went over that have gone over the evolution of uh, drone technology. Or I mean, it has they haven't been around very long, but they have gotten uh, pretty scary. I mean, they at the end of the documentary, they uh, they were going over surveillance drones and the, the capabilities with the cameras that uh, that use. The technology that basically is in your your cell phone camera, and how they can uh, record it, it's all digital, and I believe they 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 upload it to the cloud, so it's, I mean it's infinite uh, storage, and how they can uh, track whatever they want to track. I mean if they can slave it to individual cars, uh, people walking. And, and uh, track them for however length like of time, and it's all digital, so they can go back and look at it whenever. Yeah, so you know that stuff. sounds really scary uh, if it worked perfectly, but sometimes I wonder, like, are aren't there technical problems? I mean, we know that the NSA wants to store all this metadata on people, but their storage centers are malfunctioning and they lose data regularly. So, if there's any comfort in this, maybe it's that um, these things don't always work perfectly, right? Brian, what do you think about that? Yeah. I, go ahead, caller. Well, I, I was just I was just saying, I mean, if, it, if it's something, I mean, like nationwide, when you're, you know, listening to or recording billions of bits of information, mm. but if, it, if you're talking about like an individual city, uh, it, it seems to me like it was doable. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. I think just like if you are, I, I've said this often, um, if you are targeted, okay, by the NSA or whatever alphabet soup organization, it, it's over. Like your privacy has gone. Okay. There's nothing <laughs> you, do. you can do. There's nothing you do. Oh, when, it, when it gets to that lower level, I mean, they've got you, you know, be it via drone or whatever. Uh, and I agree. It, it's certainly plausible. En masse, it doesn't seem to, to work very well, certainly on the surveillance. And as it stands right now, but these technologies do get better. You know, that that's certainly true. Yeah. You know, I remember years ago, there was some um, police department in Florida. Mark, do you remember this? There's some police department in Florida that spent all this money on a facial recognition technology where they were looking at people as they were entering a stadium or something it like that. It was Ybor City, which is a very popular downtown location in Tampa. Okay. And uh, yeah, as I recall, it just didn't work. Like, I mean, obviously well, it's a very scary concept if, the, if it actually does work. I remember but. talking about that in, uh, this would have been before 2006 when we moved up here. So my 
concern is is that we're talking about 10 years gone, and in, yeah. in technical time, I'll bet you facial recognition software is caught yeah, up. It well, is. certainly Google and Facebook have sort of perfected it, which is kind of freaky. But I don't know if they've perfected it. What I think that they do is they just assume from your friends who it is that they're looking at, like uh, the relationship of who it is. But yeah, I've had them say, um, you know, would you like to tag Stephanie Murphy in this picture? I'm like, no, I don't know whether it's my business to do that. I, <laughs> I don't know if Stephanie would like that. So Snitch like, I, I, on Stephanie. I, right. That's how I feel when I see it. Like, I'm not giving you any more information, whoever you are. Well, thank you, Mark. You're a true friend, not just a Facebook friend. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else that, to add, that Ken? Reminds me, well, I, I, the face recognition uh, stuff kind of reminded me of the movie Minority Report. Yeah. With Tom Cruise. I don't know if you ever, if you ever watched that. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, sure. It, 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 you know, I, it, it's right along those lines. I mean, of course, that was science fiction, but, you know. Well, it never take. sometimes it just all, takes a few decades. Yeah, sometimes it just takes a few decades for 1984 to happen. Yeah. Ken, thank you for calling oh, that, in tonight. Uh, a party, Appreciate it. A parting shot. Yes. So you, the, the riots you're having there at the, wherever you're at. Keen, yeah. Uh, the pumpkin riot. It reminds me of. Uh, the celebration they have up in Ames, Iowa, every spring, called Misha. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but that no. recently they've just having been having so many. Uh, the, the students, the weather gets nice, and the students all get drunk, you know, and, and the cops come out and shut down the party, so you got thousands of students going in the street, causing trouble. So Wait a kinda, second, you know, your students drink. <laughs> Right. Thanks for the thanks for the call, Ken. Oh, you ain't gonna lie, Ken. It's okay. We'll still be your friend. Yeah. So I guess we should finish talking about um, what happened yeah. at the Keene Pumpkin Fest riots. In case you're just joining us, we're broadcasting from Keene, New Hampshire, which has been in the news this weekend because there's an annual festival in Keene called Pumpkin Fest, just a fall celebration. And at this year's Pumpkin Fest, there's a college in Keene, Keene State College, where the students uh, started rioting. Well, I don't know if it's the students. It was people, uh, young people that were in that general vicinity. Ah, you're I, right. Okay. I don't I think it's necessarily that. townies, um, but it, it could be people visiting. Because everybody who's quoted in the newspaper was from Massachusetts. Up here in New Hampshire, we call people from Massachusetts mass holes. Now, my yes. business partner, Ian, had caught some video of uh, of the bottle throwing that began all of this. And some police officers that he claims was about a, a block away, just sort of not doing anything about it. Um, he couldn't tell whether they had noticed it, but it seemed pretty odd that a bunch of kids are throwing bottles a block away and they don't notice it. But what this turned into was this... this Riot. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, Fires in the middle of the street. The kids are flipping over cars. Broken glass. Taking well, down there's a lot of broken glass. And the street, street signs. Lights. Yeah. Street signs were coming down like. Yeah. They're just knocking them down. But they took down a street light. These are, <laughs> these are not. I mean, at one point, you know those big dumpsters? The ones that you could like drop a motor home in? Those big giant dumpsters? Yeah. We have those for the pump because there's 30,000 pumpkins here for Pumpkin Fest, <laughs> and they flipped one of those things over. I oh can't imagine God. the level of coordination on it takes. Facebook, on the news and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to alkavision.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. 
and we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are a few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now. Effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 is the number to call tonight. If you want to get in touch with us, 855-450-FREE. The Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines, our favorite VPN provider here at Free Talk Live. One more time, 855-450-3733. Or on Skype, lrn.fm. Now, we were talking about the riots at the Keene Pumpkin Festival. Uh, just to recap. This show's being done in Keene, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Just in case you're just joining us, yeah, we're broadcasting from Keene, New Hampshire. There's an annual pumpkin festival, and this year there were riots, and really riotous riots. I mean, we're talking fires in the streets, taking down street lights, and uh, cops with shields and riot gear. Very scary stuff. Nobody died, from what I understand. There's this rumor that uh, two people or five people died. Okay. Now, when you start flipping over those big, giant dumpsters, I'm surprised people didn't die. But as I understood yeah. and understand that, you know, God loves drunks and, and children. And um, in this case, uh, you know, they, they they did not die. There's some injuries, but nobody died. Well, that's fortunate. Uh, yeah, but, you know, something, if you want to talk about real fortunes, <laughs> maybe take control. Fortune follows the prepared. Fortune follows the prepared. That's it. <laughs> and if you want to be prepared, if you want to, you know, we were talking about drones and all this business, you know, your privacy getting taken on uh, or getting taken away, I should say. Uh, you, one of the first steps you can do, one of the easiest steps you can do, and one of the most inexpensive steps you can do uh, to get your privacy back and to be prepared is to get a VPN a virtual private network, and this is software. It goes on your computer, goes on your smartphone, on your tablet. You take your pick, works on practically, uh, you know, any computing device, and you want to install this on there, and you want to get the one from Pro XPN. 
They are the best in the business, in my opinion. Uh, and I do. I run a tech show, and I am constantly vetting uh, software and what works best. You know how it can set you free. Well, this is one of those pieces of software that can really help set you free by controlling or by giving you back your privacy. So you want to get a VPN from ProXPN. They're using OpenVPN. They've got all the right encryption. It's phenomenal. So, but I want you to use the code if you go to ProXPN.com and you get your hands on this VPN. I want you to use the code FTL50. And that'll get you 50% off an annual account. It's going to end up costing you less than, honestly, a cup of coffee a month. It's amazing. Or if you love Bitcoin, because ProXPN certainly does, use the code FTLBTC and you'll get 62% off of the annual account. So believe me, you want to get, and you want to get the, the premium account. You want to get one of those because that'll give you unlimited bandwidth, uh, you know, and all the trimmings of accessing servers all around the world because they're a global business and they're doing it right. So go to proxpn.com and get your hands on your privacy once again. All right. Let's go to Skype and talk to Jared. He's on Skype. Let me bring you on. Hey, Jared, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How are you? doing great tonight we uh didn't get caught in the riots well mark did you get caught in it i didn't even know the if like this is the point i was trying to make early on is is that the, my geographic location to the riots was completely irrelevant mm -hmm. uh, my whole life i went to i went to pumpkin fest we left at about 4 p.m after you know we went to the pumpkin parade with my son and you know did some pumpkin-y things so the riots didn't happen till after dark is that what you're saying yeah they started about that time there was still light when the bottle throwing started <laughs> but that was blocks away i didn't i didn't know anything about it we left mm -hmm. everything was fine got it did the you show know, all I, during it i never knew that about Keene and growing up in the northeast my whole life i never knew that you guys had that giant pumpkin fest you know started you know, in the early 90s hmm, well yeah i guess i just never heard of it wow i'm 20 years behind the times i guess when it comes to that you know it's funny because i was i was associated jack-o'-lanterns with my favorite horror movie series halloween and uh i just always you know whenever i see pumpkins i always think of that but i don't know if halloween is popular the creator of that series was a muslim actually a lot of people don't know that so, funny but huh. <laughs> did not know that um yeah mustafa akkad created it um but you know, a lot of people don't on. know, too, that actually the Halloween mask on Michael Myers, the, the, the character, Shatner. is yeah. yeah, it's William Shatner. They actually molded it on his face. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so every time I watch it, I just think it was Star Trek. And, you know, it's funny because that's actually scary, but you wouldn't. So <laughs> when you're told that, it's just like, really? But, no, what I was calling about was I was listening to the podcast on Saturday. And, you know, God, I just love the Saturday shows because you get these – Republican callers who call in, and I know they're just blowing a gasket when they listen. <laughs> no, they threatened to get I the mean, show it, taken off of uh, the air in uh, Myrtle Beach. Well, I understand the sentiment because I used to be a Republican through and through, and you know, well, then I, you know, I understand sorry. that. But wanting to silence people with whom you disagree is not uh, indicative of any particular party. It's simply indicative of people that just can't handle new ideas. Un un American market. It know, is un American. Sean would not be, uh, <laughs> oh, would Sean Hannity would love it supportive. because he's un American. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just, I, I sit there listening to it and I would just like to think of a way to somehow get through to some of these people. And I, I just don't know how. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of ignorance. Like I was listening to that guy who was said, oh, Hong Kong and Thailand, the same thing. I've been to Hong Kong before. And Hong Kong is way more capitalist than. America has pretty much ever been in the past hundred years. They even have a flat tax there that Republicans love to talk about. Yeah, no, it's true. You it's know? been that way for a while. In fact, there's that great series um, that Milton Friedman did year right. in, yep. in the eighties, free, uh, free to choose. And the first episode, he's doing it from Hong Kong because he's trying to prove his point. You know, this is what economic freedom looks like, and he wasn't in America. Well, the funny thing hey, is, know, is that somehow you believe that you can take the first shot at a new republic. I mean, republics were pretty, especially one the size of the United States, pretty rare um, before 1776. Not not completely, um, you know, unheard of, but not that common for a thousand years prior to 17 the 1780s. Uh, but you know, the idea that you're going to, the first run at something like this is going to work. Actually, the Constitution's the second <clears> run at it. But, you know, we've, we've experienced things in the world. There would be a better way to write a Constitution today than the one that's 230 years old or whatever. Agreed, but it would be scary of who would write it today. Indeed, but, it would. <laughs> but when you look at the economic issues, I mean, even just like the flat tax or whatever, you know, Hong Kong has you know a lot of problems. They're very minor, but I mean, there's a lot of things about Hong Kong I did not like. But I Jared, mean, get, get right up on your microphone, please. Yeah, and what yeah. were some of those things you didn't like about Hong Kong? 
cool if you look at what's going on over there. Um, well, one thing is um, the way their government is ran, um, they have the equivalent of a parliament, and China appoints a third of the members of parliament. And I guess now they're trying to appoint the president, and uh, I understand that's a big problem over there. But if you look at the flat tax and how prosperous they are, I mean, just from where we are here today, just by going to that would be a lot better. But it's just so funny how – when you try to tell that guy about Hong Kong, he's ah, no, it's a bunch of, you know, five-year-old children running around naked waiting to be raped. It's just like the ignorance out there. It's just frustrating. I always laugh listening to the Saturday shows because it is the re- it is the Republican night. That's that was it. A lot of <laughs> I, I well, agree you- with you about Saturday nights, but I don't agree with you about that guy. That guy was purposely misrepresenting what we said. We said Hong Kong and Singapore, and he calls in and says, "Oh, so you want it like you want it like uh, Thailand, where they rape little boys? Like, what are you?" talking about are you saying that every slanty eyed person um, from asia is the same <laughs> what, what well, kind of weird bigot want... calls it and says that <laughs> well you know people might actually want to look into thailand because i had a conversation oh there's some interesting stuff doctors. but it has a very right, controlled told, economy a lot of expats so go there but i talked to one of my doctors and he said that their medical system uh for medical tourism is very good so the yeah. way the medical system is going here maybe he may want to look at going into thailand yeah we actually had an advertiser asia run like hell yep. com, and it made me feel a lot better about this whole obamacare thing if things don't work out with the us medical system you can get over to uh, thailand and get a uh, get heart surgery for like $25,000 that's like with the plane ticket. So you don't have to worry well, about... Well, you don't even have to go to Thailand. Stossel had a special once, and there was a place in Tulsa. No, it's in Oklahoma City. Oh, the Oklahoma oh, Surgery, the so, surgery so Center of Oklahoma, I believe, they take Bitcoin for uh, common surgical procedures, and they yeah. do it... Like, they cut the costs really low because they don't deal with insurance providers and things like At that. At all. But- I guess the question is, before I go, Mark, is how, I mean, Ian isn't tactful, so he just comes out full throttle, and these people want to, like, vomit all over the phone, but you're more tactful, but how can you get across to these people to re-examine their values and maybe come to the same road that I did, where the Republican Party left you? Thank you, Jared, for the call tonight. This is Free Talk Live. We'll ask Mark that question here in moments because we are up against the clock. 855-450-FREE, the number here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. Hey, guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of hb extract it's extremely effective and it starts working in just days visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers and we've never increased our price in over 10 years that makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it a healthy heart is a happy heart call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com Free Talk Live. I think you guys should be encouraging people to drop the drugs, drop the alcohol, and live a straight life. Why? That's freedom. That is freedom. How how can you say? (laughs) I mean, maybe it's freedom for you, but what if I enjoy altering my consciousness? 
Well, I think it's sad. Why? Um, it's a sad existence um, when people have to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Oh, oh I'm now, not addicted. Now, now you're assuming addiction. Alcohol, we're talking about marijuana, we're talking about drug use in general. What about it's caffeine? Sad Are we talking about caffeine? Again. I'm talking about something that what you just said is mind altering. So oh, caffeine is mind altering. If you eat a chocolate candy bar, if you have a chocolate candy bar and there's caffeine in it, it doesn't get you high. Oh, you know what the well, wait a minute. Christy, I have a, I'm sensitive to, to caffeine, and I can tell you two Diet Cokes will make me a very angry, angry man. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Freetalklive.com is our website where you can find archives of all the Saturday shows, like a previous caller was mentioning. Those were his favorite. And uh, the way you can get those is just go by looking up at the top of the page where the last seven nights of archives are posted there for you or going to archives.freetalklive.com where you'll get archives going back for years. And they're all there for you for free. So feel free to grab them, listen to them, share them, share them with your friends. Um, 855-450-FREE is the number here on Free Talk Live, or you can call us on Skype at lrn.fm. 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind tonight. Yeah, so Jared called in in the final uh, last segment and asked uh, me, how does one go about convincing people of the ideas of liberty? Now, this is specifically, I think he was talking about Republicans. Republicans. He, he hangs out with the Republican sorts. And so that's those are the people he's interested in. And I get it. Um, you know, I mean, I'm certainly I, I'm I am a Republican, certainly formerly a believer in the conservative ideas. I am not a believer in conservative ideals at this point. But um, I think that I'm probably capable of speaking to people who believe those pretty well. First off, the th when you ask that question, what you're asking is, what how, what magic spell do I cast on other people to get them to think like I want them to think? And the answer is, there's none. <laughs> the closest thing Fair to magic enough. that we have on planet Earth is, uh, you know, sort of using your voice to convince people of things. Like a charismatic person speaking to somebody in a way, trying to get on their level, speak to them about something they're concerned with, uh, you know, that has a practice in this particular area is going to be the most effective thing you're going to find. So if you're talking to somebody about, say, immigration, like we were last night, well, if I was speaking to somebody sort of one-on-one, -on -one, when when people call in and they name call and say, you you children don't know nothing about nothing, you know, you're going to get, you, you know, you mess with the bull, you're going to find the horns. <laughs> but in, in the case of just, you know, talking to somebody about, uh, things like immigration, I probably would say something like, look, we're, we're clear that immigration's good for the country, right? And they're going to be like, I like immigration. It's just illegal immigration that bothers me. I'm like, well, you do know, understand that we're talking about the government here, an organization that you consider to be inefficient and, uh, you know, to be a bad, uh, make poor decisions when it comes to people's lives in many, many ways. Why do you think they're good at, um, do you really think they're good at choosing Who's going to come in the country and who's not? Yeah, but 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 well, wait. I I want to kind of I'm leading you down the primrose path. So smell some primrose here for a second because it's important. And then you 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 sort of take them down the path and you say, look, the government doesn't know how many people should be here. Really, the problem in this country 
And uh, Milton Friedman, I think, is, is quoted as saying that a free country loves immigration. It's once you have socialism that you're scared of anybody who's going to go on welfare. That And they'll say, yeah, yeah, because really p- people's problem is is people coming here and just getting a bunch of free stuff. Well, unless their problem is actually racism and they just don't want to say it. Well, let's it, parse those people out because there's, you know, yeah. there, there may be 10, 15 percent of the population. Let's find them. Let's uh, let's let's just let's make sure that the, that's, that's what we're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, sure. And with those people, you can say, you know, that New Mexico's constitution is written in both Spanish and English. You're aware of that. Like, you know, <laughs> we drew a line around these people and called them Americans. <laughs> <laughs> So exactly. try to be as convincing as you can, I guess, and, and bring up points that, that speak to them in a way that's important to them. All right. Solid words from Mark. Let's go back to the phones. Here we have someone I, I was hoping would call in. It's Isaac in San Diego. And is this Isaac Yonemoto? Yes, it is. Hi, Isaac. Welcome to Free Talk Live. Uh, I said I was hoping that you'd call in. Hi, how are you doing? It's great to finally meet you, I guess, in in voice. Yeah, very nice to meet you, too. Now, I just want to clarify for the listeners. um, Isaac and I had been going back and forth by email. He's actually a scientist, and he's doing a project uh, that's related to open source science, basically creating uh, cancer drugs that are not patented and are not bound by the science industrial complex. Uh, Isaac, I'm curious to hear to hear more about that if you tell us about it well so part of the reason why that i kind of got interested in this is um you know I, and, and this has actually come fortuitously come into the um public eye recently because a couple of weeks ago there was a 60 minutes uh um i guess in uh, what do they call them like a tv magazine episode <laughs> uh, about about a, a 60 minute bit about uh about um the high cost of cancer drugs and it's like you know $100,000 per year in some cases. Yeah, um, it's hugely and, expensive. Know, right. And, you know, to a certain degree, the patient doesn't feel a little bit of that, a lot of that, because they have a 20% copay. And there's all sorts of finagling that happens between the insurance companies that's shielded from the patient. Um, but 20% so, you know, of $100,000 is still pretty expensive. It's still $20,000, yeah. right, exactly. And it's the last thing you want to worry about when you're sick, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and, and you know, so the, 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 the 60 Minutes article or came, came out and took it together from, well, there's corruption in the system, which is almost certainly true. Um, but, I, I mean, to me, as sort of a more free market person, one of the things that struck me was that, Part of the problem is that there is no downward pressure on the price of pharmaceuticals to begin with. Indeed. In Um, fact, and a lot of people believe that the high cost comes from all this research and development that goes into them. And while that is true, a lot of the cost is just because they're protected by patents. Right. And indeed, I mean, if you look at the numbers, um, big pharma companies spend about as much on R&D as they do on, on, um, on advertisement. Yes. And... You know, they're not hurting. They're making, on average, if you look at sort of a sector uh, index browser, Big Pharma is basically making about 20% margin, which is more than, you know, your your sort of generally succeeding company is, tends to be making around 6 to 7% margin. Wow. Um, with a few exceptions. And, and, you know, I mean, there are certainly some wildly profitable companies out there like Netflix or whatever. But, uh, but you know, generally speaking, a company should expect to make 6 or 7 to be healthy. Um, you know, by comparison, the oft like vilified insurance companies are only pulling about three to four percent margins. Um, and you know, at, at, coming from my perspective, what I see there is, you know, by and large, companies don't tend to be like deliberately acting immoral and unethically. And we do see that happening in insurance companies. And 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 I think the reason why is not because they're greedy, but because they're on the ropes. Mm-hmm. Sure. So tell me about your project. What are you doing to um, sort of address this problem? Right. So I, um, I sort of fortuitously wound up uh, working on a project that, well, unfortunately got abandoned by my, by my, um, by my previous boss. Uh, I, was a, uh, I was a scientist at the University of Maryland, mm-hmm. um, and we were working on an anti-cancer drug. Um, and then just as I was leaving, we were submitting it for some tests which came up very uh, promising. And then uh, a few months later, my boss quit. 
Um, she had just gotten tenure, and she she left she left the university. Mm. And Why would somebody leave when so, they just got and, tenure? Well, uh, so the University of Maryland is is not a particularly well run does not have a particularly well run biochemistry department. I can't speak to what what her sentiments were, but my suspicion is that she was getting increasingly frustrated with it. Mm. Um, and she got a better job offer, you know. So okay, good. Science can. So, I guess that's the answer, so. right? <laughs> okay, so you so you basically I, I, picked I, up the I, project. I Right, exactly. Um, and so I, I launched a nonprofit to, to, to in part, um, pick up that project. Cool. And so and I'm, inter- I, yeah, go I'm ahead. interested in sort of exploring sort of in the big picture. I'm also interested in exploring, you know, how do we get um, science away from, you know, as you said, the, the, the research industrial complex? Like how, how can we free medical research away from the NIH? How can we free, you know, uh, uh, energy research away from the D- Department of Energy. They don't necessarily have to be industrially sponsored. They could be charitably sponsor- sponsored or some combination. You know, just how do we get that from out from the underneath like right. the science or, government funding. Or crowdfunding, uh, which is, I know, something that you're exploring. And just if you're out there listening, consider for a moment that science in this country, whether you're talking about academic research or even companies, drug companies or biomedical science companies, they get grants from the government, and that really uh, skews their incentives. I mean, when yep. you see breast cancer researchers asking the Department of Defense for grants, you know something is wrong. And the- because if you consider that you can cut out advertising, you can cut out uh, you know all the lawyers that do the intellectual property stuff with your um, with your uh, what free what what do they, what do they call it open source open drugs, source. Um, then you can cut out a lot of the problems. And basically, you just have scientists creating drugs. If you could do a Kickstarter for this, hey hey, we really think we've got something for a longevity drug or a cancer drug or something like that, then you can find out what the market's really interested in. I mean, the Kickstarters for solar bikes are crazy or whatever. Or potato salad. Yeah. And Isaac, I know that's what you're doing, So, and we're we're short on time, but please tell me where people can find you online and read more about what your project is. Oh, sure. Uh, My project's online at Pledge, that's P-L-E-D-G-E dot I-N-D-Y S-C-I pledge.indyside.org. Isaac, thank you so much for calling in and good luck. It's like science. Yeah, wishing you you great luck with this project. This is Free Talk Live. There's more coming up 855 450 free here on the Sunday show. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
from Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, October 19th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.29 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,239 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $389. Antiwar.com reports Iraqi Prime Minister Haider Abadi has finally split the difference on the interior and defense ministries and pushed forward candidates that everyone, more or less, was able to agree upon after weeks of fighting. Unlike previous reports, the Badir Brigade's leader Hadi Amiri did not get the interior ministry spot, though the Shiite militia did ultimately end up with the spot, which was given to one of Amiri's aides, Mohammed al Gaban. Abadi also managed to make a concession to the nation's Sunni Arab minority, giving the defense ministry portfolio to Khalid Obadai, a parliament member out of Mosul, a city currently held by the Islamic State. Obadai may prove controversial because of his previous service in the Iraqi Air Force during Saddam Hussein's rule. His value appears to be primarily in being from Mosul as a symbol of the military's determination to eventually reconquer the city, which has been lost for months. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports, the Supreme Court has allowed Texas to use its strict voter ID law in the November election after a federal judge said that the law was the equivalent of a poll tax and threatened to deprive blacks and Latinos of the right to vote this year. Like earlier orders in North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin, the justice's action before dawn on Saturday, two days before the start of early voting in Texas, appears to be based on their view that changing the rules so close to an election would be confusing. Of the four states, only Wisconsin's new rules were blocked and in that case, absentee ballots had already been mailed out without notice about the need for identification. Texas has conducted several low turnout elections under the new rules, seven forms of approved photo ID, including concealed handgun licenses, but not college student IDs. The law has not previously been used in congressional elections or a high-profile race for governor. The Supreme Court's brief unsigned order, like those in the other three states, offers no explanation for its action. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports red-clad Chavistas rallied in central Caracas on Saturday to protest the killing of a young ruling party lawmaker, while across town a protest called by the opposition's new leader failed to attract a big crowd. The government says the stabbing death of the 27-year-old Robert Serra in his home earlier in the month is part of a wider plot by an elitist, self-interested opposition to bring down Venezuela's socialist experiment created by beloved late President Hugo Chavez. President Nicolas Maduro said at a rally in front of a podium emblazoned with the slogan against terrorism, do you know why they killed Robert Serra? He said, to silence us, the right-wing fascists are scared of young rebels, young revolutionaries. Maduro was clad in a yellow, blue, and red Venezuelan tracksuit. Several arrests had been made in Sarah's case, including one of his bodyguards. Maduro has also blamed Colombian paramilitaries, although some media say the case looks like an inside job and Venezuelan opposition leaders deny involvement. And in Hong Kong, violent clashes erupted early on Sunday in a Hong Kong protest hotspot as unarmed pro-democracy activists once again confronted riot police despite the confirmation of talks between protest leaders and officials earlier in the week. Hong Kong's 28,000 strong police force has been struggling to contain a youth-led movement that has shown little sign of waning after three weeks of standoffs in which hundreds of thousands of people have occupied city streets to demand full democracy in the former British colony. Colony. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
The entire nation has been transfixed by the emotional saga of missing toddler Aaron Crawford. Police remain baffled by four-year-old Aaron's mysterious disappearance. The Crawford family is finally speaking out, but it isn't easy. We're taking it day by day, you know? We just miss our baby so much. This must be so hard on everyone. All he does is cry. I hate him. Little Aaron was last seen in the bedroom he shares with his older brother, Denny. Authorities say he was abducted by an intruder in the middle of the night. Denny was in the room when Aaron was taken. Yeah, right here. Now it's just my room. Denny, can you tell us what happened? I was in my room, a man lifted up the window and came in. Were you scared? Yes, because I thought he's gonna take my Xbox. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You are listening to the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. <laughs> this is the second hour of tonight's program. And we're talking about a variety of different topics tonight, from drones to the riots at Keene Pumpkin Fest to open source science. Anything goes here on Free Talk Live, as long as it's radio friendly, of course. And the number to that call. That is important, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I always like... I mean, I like to think anything goes. It's it's nearly anything, really. I mean, you can kind of make anything radio appropriate. Just don't pander to the prurient interests or the it's lowest common denominator. It's mostly those six words. Mostly those six words, yeah. yeah. And you, hopefully you know which six words they you are. You can go look up seven, certainly can't seven say dirty them. words and then realize that one of them is just a repeat because mother isn't a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So 855-450-FREE is our number here on Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733. One more time, 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind. Let's go to the phones where Aaron in Philadelphia is listening. Hi, Aaron. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi, Stephanie. Um, I was interested in talking about overcrowding. I believe it seems to be the root source of riots and this kind of group think that spawns the government different kinds of force structures. It Overcrowding. Like had, yeah. It seems to me that in the past that people were more spread out. And they didn't they didn't uh they didn't group into such large groups that you didn't know everybody, where nobody was really anonymous because everybody was recognizable within the group. Yeah. So if okay. anyone did anything really crazy. This is interesting. I, I, I've kind of thought about this at, at the same. Uh, I've I've thought about this idea too, and I, it seems like yeah. there's advantages to maybe smaller metros. Uh, it's been posited that uh, the biggest uh, city should be fifty thousand in order to sort of be both functional and allow for the most uh, freedom um, in a in a given area, and yeah. that people you know there obviously should be uh, burbs and suburbs depending on what people want. Um, I think it's interesting, but it it seems pretty unlikely that we're going to kind of undo the collect th these yeah. big well, cities that we have. I don't know. You can undo it for yourself anytime. And yeah. actually, Aaron, I'm I I pretty much completely agree with you on this. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, where you know, if you take animals like um like rats or even dogs and put them in small cages with lots of other animals, they go nuts like oh, yeah. they just go crazy and that's basically what a city is with humans like it you're in a cage and you're with a lot of other humans and it's very stressful and there have actually been studies that show that um the fear centers of the brain and the um sort of agitation sort of high alert uh nervous anxiety centers of the brain uh grow larger and more developed in people who grow up in cities yeah i could see a real like subconscious under you know under text of just just stress, just living or being, you know, constantly rubbing elbows all the time. Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel that way when I go to when when I yeah, go to it, New York City, it is a constant feeling. So like we live in New Hampshire, right? We have a lot of wide open spaces. It's great. I love I live that. on eleven wooded acres. Right. Yes. And when I go to New York, I'm I feel tight. Yeah, it, it it's on purpose that we live out in the woods. And when you go to New York, it just to me, 
it feels like there's just a scarcity of everything, space, air, food, water, room to move around, you know, just you feel like you're fighting everybody else for these limited, scarce resources. And it's a very stressful feeling. You can't always put your finger on it, but yeah. th- that's just my opinion. I don't know. Some no, people think I agree. cities are create more freedom. But. Yeah. Well, they, they can create a degree of anonymity, I suppose, or uh, which the caller mentioned. Being able to access like things that you need, right? Sure. But at the same time, I think that there... Because somebody's going to call, somebody's going to call in, and I want to, you know, cut them off before they do, saying, "Yeah, but human touch is good. Being close to humans is good, right?" But then you have the Dunbar number, okay, which says that actually you can only handle so many close connections. In fact, yeah. I think for really close connections, it's between five and fifteen. There's different layers to the Dunbar number. It's not just one number. And I think that this, it's just, it's overload of, uh, you know, of that. And you're not actually, yeah, you're touching other people. You, you, you know, you might be really close to them, but you're not actually like emotionally close. Close to them. It's a very different situation. Yeah, be- being close to people you like might be nice. Yeah, that's but nice. Not people you don't know. That's just stressful. Aaron, what do you think? Well, I think that's exactly right. And especially as the mother was mentioned, we've been trying things like Facebook and social networks and rating systems to try and cope with the increasing populations of people. And also, in natural populations, you would have diseases that would wipe out things, that would rip through places when you had too high a number. Mm. Whereas we have these medications, vaccines, to try and prevent this balancing of the population. And so then we're running we're running up against this wall of space. There's just not going to be enough forever. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. Thanks for calling in tonight, Aaron. I totally agree with you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's an interesting thought. I talk about it a lot on my own show, Sovereign Tech. That's uh, S-O-V-R-Y-N Tech dot com. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think this like a lot of technology, especially social media and things like that, are designed to somehow mimic what you normally would get in, in a, you know, whatever natural setting humans would, would be in, whatever that may mean. Yeah, I don't know if it's doing a very good job. No, we were just not. talking about during the break that social media, to me, it can feel like uh, an unpaid full-time job that you can just never keep up with. <laughs> it's well, never over. Uh, we've Free Talk Live gets the uh, has a pretty popular Facebook page. I think we've got yep. almost forty thousand likes on the Facebook page, and and I've worked it, and it's kind of. It's kind of like this uh, addiction I have um, that I kind of vacillate on. I, I wax and wane on how much I like doing it. But I've had as many as 8 million post views in a week on the Free Talk Live page. But when I get that, I wonder to myself, what am I achieving other than being a content generator for Facebook? Yeah. And I don't think much. I try to put a link there that says listen to Free Talk Live and that kind of thing. But you know what's funny? We don't even have any numbers for our live listen links on the internet. There could be 10 people listening or there could be 10,000 people listening mm. because there are so many different – we, we uh, have our live links diversified. Yeah. And so people can be listening to all different ones and it's just impossible for us to know. Yeah. And and don't you think often the people who are going to share the memes that Free Talk Live posts and things like that are already agree with you? <laughs> I Oftentimes, but it, they reach people that, you know, that are – just yeah, I no, I don't think when you're talking about eight million people that we're reaching <laughs> that you're talking about eight million people that are full on voluntarists. No, no, but like I mean, I, I I doubt the usefulness of Facebook or social media for changing anyone's mind. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've had my mind changed on one topic one time on Facebook. What was that one topic? Um, it was whether or not one should use uh, a gender oriented. What kind of gender oriented pronoun one should use for somebody with a sex change operation? It was uh, Charles Johnson made the point that look, you serve the, the language serves you. You don't serve the language, and the language is constantly morphing in order to better serve our needs as a you know as as a human species. Was the question whether to call the person well, what they want to be me, called? Or? It bothered me at one point to say uh, that if somebody decides to change their gender, to go for, that it would it it's incumbent upon me to change the way I refer to them because look these words have meaning. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know I can be kind of a sticker when uh, you know pedantic about words, um, and you know it's it's part of what Free Talk Live does. <laughs> um, we're we're a bit pedantic. Okay. And so you know for me w- whether or not I could let go of the idea of using uh, which personal pro- which gender personal pronoun that I'd be using him or her and things like that. So for me I was able to let go based on what he said. But that's one time in the course of using Facebook. My account's been open there since two thousand and four. Man, so not a very good track record. <laughs> Pretty dismal. Let's go to the phones. We do have some calls on the line. 
We'll talk to Matt in Tennessee. Hey, Matt, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how y'all doing? Thanks for taking my call. Sure thing. What's on your mind? Um, really, uh, Mark's comments about drunks, uh, you know, drunk kids turning over dumpsters and, uh, and, uh, you know, causing trouble in, at the Keen Pumpkin Festival is really specious. You know, first of all, because in my experience, I haven't heard about it here recently, and I just, I want to know how Mark knows they're all drunk. How does Mark know they're not all stoned? Does Mark not know that they're not on uh, these things from Big Pharma? Uh, Good questions, Matt. Thank you for calling in tonight. We'll have Mark uh, put him on the hot seat here in (laughs) moments. How do you know they're all drunk, Mark? Have you interviewed all of them? This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind. Ever wonder why so many politicians violate the U.S. Constitution? Maybe they simply don't understand its principles. Fiat empire, original intent, cultural Marxism, corporate fascism, and Molang Labe explore these issues. Featuring experts like Ron Paul, G. Edward Griffin, Edwin Vieira, Pat Buchanan, John McManus, Larry Pratt, this 12-hour 8-DVD set is available only at moviepubs.net. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Do apologize for that little delay there. You're listening to the live Sunday night edition with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. (laughs) And you can call in about anything that's on your mind tonight at 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live is a show where you literally can call about anything. 855-450-FREE-3733 or lrn.fm on Skype. Let's go to the phones and talk to Pat in Virginia. Hey, Pat, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, we're going to talk about drunks, too. We've oh, got, we were. To, That's yeah. right. Let's, Let's get to, to that Pat after first, Pat. So, Pat, what's on your mind tonight? Hey, good evening to you guys. Thanks for taking my call. Good evening to you. I was, uh, I was uh, calling in regards to that uh, Hannah Graham missing out of Charlotte's real there's uh, somebody missing from Charlottesville, Virginia? So, yeah. Um, okay. Hannah Graham, Hannah Graham. Okay. And uh, they found some remains like 10 miles outside of Charlottesville hmm. where, she, where she disappeared around, you know? So they think it might be her remains. Right. So what was the so, background on but, uh, her case? Is they, she... they called in different um, different uh, sheriffs, you know, around the region, and they came in and volunteered their help, and they're the ones that uh, found them, found her, you know, so. That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, yeah this was an 18-year-old yeah, yeah. girl. Um and she went to she was yeah. going to college in Charlottesville, Virginia. Is this another case of the media just kind of focusing on pretty young blonde missing girls? Um, this they... is a pretty young blonde. Yeah, I mean that's, that's I didn't the hear about it though, that... so it didn't go na- national um, on any level. So I mean, yeah, but that is the critique that remember that blonde girl that went missing in Aruba or something like that yeah, years ago, right. and it was there was so much media attention on it. It's like people criticize because they say that these good-looking young girls get all the attention when they go missing. But well, it's there are a lots tragedy. Of yeah, people. it's a tragedy no matter what. Oh, yeah. of course. But yeah. there are lots of missing people that don't get that attention. Sure. You know. I hope they. I hope they get on the right track and find that MH three seventy or whatever it is, the plane that went down, Malaysia Airlines. That's another I mystery. Hope they get on the right. Right track for that and solve that matter. Wow. There's yeah, probably there. probably a lot of uh, attractive young women on thank, that too. Thank you, Pat, for the call tonight. Yeah, that's a weird story. Indeed. Still haven't found it, huh? I, I I don't know. It's supposed to. It's it's an odd story, right? Absolutely. There's yeah. You know, some of these plane. Well, the one not the ones that went missing, but there is that plane. I thought this was interesting. There was recently information the the plane that was supposedly shot down by the Russian government over Ukraine. Uh, they're theorizing now it was a false flag because the inf- the story has kind of changed because supposedly the missile hit it. It would it was obliterated, but. In the remains now, and this wasn't in the the official report sent by the third party that is the Netherlands, uh, the 
the story now is is that one at least one of the uh, you know remains left over, not survivors or no survivors, but one of the bodies found uh, had an oxygen had the oxygen mask on, which should have been impossible according to the story that this Russian missile obliterated this plane. Yeah, but mm. who knows what happened after they landed, uh, right? I mean, well, no, that's the thing. No, is I that mean, this... landed, they, they crashed. Is that remember the this wasn't the Russian government, this was the Russian separatists, and they cleaned up the site and they you know they handled these people and they they put them on. On, uh, train cars and stuff so maybe one of them decided they need an oxygen mask yeah, on their face i think the netherlands report said though that this the plane was i mean just boom you know i mean yeah. like there was no like crash to be had it was just pieces falling okay you know so it seems odd but anyway it's it was an interesting story that i had learned about. well mark yeah that sounds like a that sounds like it could be true but yeah you never you just never know when you're trusting these media agencies. Well, you're never going to know when you're half the globe away yeah, um, and course. you're not involved. It's, it's it's just difficult. But one thing you do know for sure, according to Matt in Tennessee, is that all these college kids that, that were riding in Keene the other day were drunk. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I, so that's funny. Um, I did claim that the college students were drunk, and it's certainly possible some of them were hyped up on um, wham-whams and, and quaaludes or whatever. I have no idea. But... Quaaludes. They were throwing. I have no idea. There's still quaaludes out there. There's somewhere there are quaaludes. That was when Mark was in college. <laughs> <laughs> the minute I was in college, um, they they were throwing bottles at each other, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess that these bottles were probably full of alcohol. They probably weren't apple cider vinegar, and I challenge you to find anything coming out of a bottle any longer, a glass bottle uh, that isn't apple cider vinegar and, and and or alcohol. So they're whipping liquor bottles and beer bottles at each other. They they had to have got emptied somehow, so you're talking about a good percentage of them. People that make the choice to go rioting and flipping over random cars and dumpsters and pulling down streetlights, they don't have... Uh, I mean, it's not like the black... It's not like Black uh, Flag... Uh, what are the Black Flag anarchists? What's that group? Um... The, the one black that travels, block? yeah, the black block that travels to like the G20 or anything. Oh, it's yeah. not like they showed up for Pumpkin Fest. <laughs> um, so, so the chances are good that you're talking about uh, ruffian uh, sports fans or whatever who might be complaining, you know, upset about a girl or ball game or whatever going at each other. Well, how do you know? This is a serious question, by the way. How do you know that I don't. there weren't um, agent provocateurs? Like because so, well, considering that the cops weren't paying any attention to it, supposedly, right? Well, they might not have known about it. I mean, agent provocateurs could be federal government agents. They could be from a private organization. Who knows? I mean, so the the theory, the way the reason I say that is because this will take a little explanation. So, the backstory behind Keen Punk. Pumpkin Festival is that it's becoming very militarized over the last few years. There were years. snipers. I saw them on the top of the Colony Mill Theater. Yeah, uh, people around here were jo jokingly calling it the Sniper Colonial. Fest uh, yeah. because there were there were literally snipers on top of buildings, and they've been there for the last couple of years at least. Uh, we got pictures. And also, Keene, New Hampshire, was in the news because even though it's this sleepy little town where not much usually happens, they got a federal grant to receive a Bearcat vehicle, which is a militarized uh, attack vehicle, essentially. Right. And the comedy shows did a bit about, uh, I think it was, um, wasn't... Uh Colbert. Was it Colbert or was it uh, the the one last uh, last week tonight or whatever it is? I'm not sure. This but week tonight. This yeah. week tonight. They did. Uh, I think it was last week tonight. Anyway, they they did these bits. It's like it's the pumpkin fest. What do they need a tank for? You know that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's a good question. It's <laughs> ironic. What do they need it for? And so that's that's why I was saying agent provocateurs because. They have to justify somehow this increased militarization, and now they can say, see, isn't it a good thing we have this bear cat and snipers because things could get out of hand at Pumpkin Fest. You never know what'll happen. Be afraid. We need the government to keep us safe. What do you think? 855-450-FREE. Agent provocateurs? Why does Keen need a bear cat anyway? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. That's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. 
And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928 308 0408. That's 928 308 0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733. 855-450-FREE. That is our phone number here tonight on the show where you can call up and bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. 3733. Or on Skype, lrn.fm. Yeah, if you go to BitcoinBountyHunter.com, they've got bounties there that are available right now. One's worth more than $10,000. Use your investigative skills 
to collect these bounties. You can place your own bounty or you can add new ones um, there. The authorities aren't going to be solving any of these cases anytime soon. So it's going to be done by people like you that are using their skills for profit. Go check it out, BitcoinBountyHunter.com. It's worth your time if you're a good investigator, BitcoinBountyHunter.com. It's like the Bitcoin A-team. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So um, we were talking about uh, basically a pumpkin fest conspiracy theory that I was positing. Now, I mean, I have no really idea if this is true, but it kind of makes sense. Uh, in case you're just joining us, we're talking about the pumpkin festival that is in a idyllic event held in the idyllic town of Keene, New Hampshire, where not much usually goes on. <laughs> you think it was bad this year? Wait till Pickle Fest next year in Winchester. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is the kind of thing we're talking about. It's basically a county fair kind of deal. Yeah, but it's running down Main Street. Yeah, Main Street. But I mean, Main Street in a town that is not on a ma any major highway, a town that doesn't have a huge population, uh, you well, know, you know, it's like it's not exactly in a, a major metropolitan area or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with Keene. I, I like Keene just fine. But it's just it doesn't like if if you were going to say some area, quote, needs a bearcat or needs a heavy police presence to control people. Maybe you could make that case in larger cities where there's just a lot more people, but not here. And I, I think that there you know, the, the government people would love some way to justify their increased militarization of the logistics of Pumpkin Fest and, and just the policing in Keene in general. And they've looked for that excuse in the Free State Project. You know, they've called the Free State Project domestic terrorists in another town in New Hampshire, Concord. Well, actually, that's a city, but in another city in New Hampshire. Well, Keene's a city, too, but only cities are designation, political but designations. you got to not... understand, a city by New Hampshire standards, okay? <laughs> this is not exactly 22, a, people in a metro, major metro, right? <laughs> so, yeah, the, the police in Concord applied for a federal grant for one of these Bearcats, and they claim that the Free State Project, uh, which is an organization that wants liberty lovers to move to New Hampshire and get active for freedom, whatever that means to them, you can check it out at freestateproject.org, um, they claimed that the Free State Project members were uh, domestic terrorists and they needed these bear cats to deal with them. Uh, so, yeah, the police always want to justify their new shiny toys that are paid for by other people's money by saying that there are threats to your safety and they're going to keep you safe and they need these tools to do it. Yeah, to, to some degree, I, I almost hope you're right, because the alternative is is that national news was made, a riot was started in New England by a bunch of college kids over Pumpkin Fest. And not, you know, as to where, when you look at a lot of riots that have occurred recently, take Ferguson or, you know, other things that happened, uh, you know, those actually have like a purpose. And I think a lot of people have brought up, and maybe rightfully so, and I'm going to say a word that's just going to make everybody go, oh my God, uh, you know, some people are, are claiming a degree of white privilege here. Because, you know, white people, this is what they get to riot about. And who cares as to where if it was black people doing this, would the outcome have been different for one? Yeah. And for two, you know, would what the do the body count yeah, be different? When yeah. black people do riot, what is it about? Now, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I don't have a good enough history about like the the riots that happen after a basketball game. Uh, what happens is sporting events are completely different. Uh, but I mean, you know, you look at the L.A. riots from the 90s and all this stuff. Uh, you know, these people are rioting about serious things. But then what do you know, then the idea comes out and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from what other people have said. What happens when a bunch of white people start rioting in New England? It's over nonsense. Yeah, that's that's the disappointing thing to me in the, this story is like there are a lot of political issues that these students could have been rioting over. You know, like they could have been protesting the militarization of the police. They could have been uh, protesting the highest property taxes in New Hampshire. They could have been protesting all number of things, uh, the encroachment of the government people but no they just there didn't seem to be any kind of political message it was just like yeah let's get drunk and most of the time that you see riots uh with uh, going on in in communities of color um or whatever you there there's yeah when you there's there's a a spark a spark right like an issue that's at the center of it sure but oftentimes when you see the rioting it has it it appears to have no relationship to the issue for instance in Ferguson they're destroying businesses in their town um, and it's going to be months or years before they're able to get you know groceries or whatever in their town so 
are there people that are upset about a, a genuine issue? Yes, that's true. Yeah. And then it seems like there's people that just want to set a building on fire, and they've got you know now the momentum's there. Um, the you know and, the, and they can do it. So and and I think this is largely true with all the. Uh, well, I think there's a lot riots. of people that have traumas that they find an opportunity to you know somehow enact. Uh, or, you know, act out or lash out about them or something like that. I don't think anyone, I, I really have a hard time believing that there's that many people uh, to where they'd end up in every riot that ever occurs that just want to watch the world burn. I don't think there's that many people on the planet that would want to do that. But then also, I do posit the but question. if they have the trauma that makes them want to watch the world burn, then they are a person that want to watch wants to watch the world burn, right? I mean, they're just. Sure, but I'm just saying, like, there, I think there's people who, who love to, to fetishize this idea that there's just some people that are just totally messed up, you know, and that, and that they do things for no reason whatsoever. They just have some uh, wires loose. Uh, and I, I just I don't I, think they're born that way, but I think that right. they, exist, they are well, messed right, up. But some people make the case that they are born that way. Okay. But I st- There I st- are some that they're born that way. There's uh, some evidence that like serial killers and stuff Scant are messed few, up. Scant few, it's got to be. Scant yes. few. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot uh, of times um, serial killers just have incredibly traumatic childhoods. But, so. Yeah, but I mean, again, the question still stands, though, is that I wonder if these weren't a bunch of New Englanders and if this was somewhere else and it was happening for quote unquote no reason and at a pumpkin fest, you know, and if it was people of color, whatever, would it have ended up uh, very differently? And I think oh, it would Oh, I think that's unquestionable. It would have ended up differently. Uh, anyway, we do have a call on Skype. Uh, let's talk to Greg on Skype. Hey, Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, how you doing, everybody? Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound very professional. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a radio pro? Yeah, I am. I oh, am. Cool. I am actually sitting in my studio right now. We um, just recently picked up the Liberty Radio Network just because we needed some programming on uh, our internet radio network. We're in Pennsylvania, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So I want to say hi to all the folks out there in Keene and right especially on. you folks because I enjoy your show. What's, uh, what's the radio network? Well, it's called the AIR Network. Okay. A-I-R Network. We actually uh, originally set it up to do regional sports. And unfortunately, we don't do a lot of games live. However, uh, I do a a local talk show in addition to picking up some other programs, and we also do a local sports show. But having said that, I saw this evening on um, NBC News, which I was quite surprised as I'm uh, flipping the channels after watching some football games. I notice a name, Keene, New Hampshire, (laughs) as I've I've been listening for the last uh, month or so since we've been carrying LRN. And having said that, all of a sudden they made this big deal out of this riot that broke out that looked just like it was possibly a bunch of, you know, crazy college kids who got drunk. Or, as you had mentioned, because we are militarizing our local police as we have in Pennsylvania with these Bearcats because of the grant money and the uh, Homeland funding, it, it makes me wonder if there might not be some provocateurs involved in Keene kind of watching you, setting up some... Maybe some uh, uh, activities on the outside, you know what I'm saying, some outsiders coming in, uh, creating sort of a firestorm. Because last night, they also appeared in West Virginia because West Virginia beat Baylor in football and they started burning couches. Wow. I also (laughs) wonder that too, Greg. And thanks for the call. Glad you're here. Thanks for carrying us. Thanks for picking up the show. 855 450 free here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. 
Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Is a conspiracy afoot. Regarding the Pumpkin Fest riots, let us know what you think or bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE, the word free, 855-450-3733 or on Skype, lrn.fm. And those phone lines are brought to you by ProXPN, our favorite VPN provider. All right. You know, Mark... We, I think we've talked about the Pumpkin Fest uh, riots enough. Um, you had a very interesting story that you brought in about the Talmud. You sure you don't want to talk about drones more? Oh, yeah, actually. Well, okay, why don't we do that? Let's talk about the drones because we never actually ended up finishing that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, is laying out some seemingly very restrictive rules uh, and that's what the story from Forbes is about on the use of personal use of drones. People use okay. it to, f you know, do photography at their weddings. There's lots of actually really nice. Uh, I don't. I hate to use the word legitimate, but uh, you know, good uses for these things. Sure, uh, they're not just for military. No, right. Or anything like that. Right. I mean, and even, you know, uh, the Red Cross uh, has used them for sending in, um, you know, medical supplies and areas where humans and vehicles have a very hard time getting to. There's genuine good uses for drones. So I think it's important to look into it. But according to Forbes in this article is that 
nobody's, you know, the, the drone users aren't really, you know, raising an eyebrow at what the FAA is proposing. So I'll read on here. Uh, drone users are often, oftentimes quick to comment when a government official with the FAA or the National Park Service tells them they can't use their cool toy somewhere. Realtors, photographers, and other potential commercial users have expressed dismay over the FAA's backwards regulations, which allow flying for fun, but not flying for work. Uh, drone users are also good at organizing to share everything from photos to techniques. The DIY drones user group has more than 55,000 members. The quadcopters Facebook group has 2,500 members. Uh, suffice to say, a lot of people uh, you know, are interested in using these things as hobbyists or for business. Uh, some blog posts on drones receive hundreds of comments. It, it goes on and on about all that. As a supporter of the nascent industry and the decades-old hobby, I'm baffled by the lack of pushback against the FAA by otherwise very vocal people. With just 15 uh, days left before the FAA's comment period on model aircraft rules closes, tens of thousands of drones users have been largely silent. Uh, and, and so this is a slightly older story, but as far as I understand it, the bulk of this has passed. Um, and and that's the concern. Uh, and also, I'll move on a, a little bit ahead here. Uh, th let's see. That's a... a Sorry, I'm trying to find the spot. Okay, that means the agency is poised to arbitrary tell. Or here's here's the what the ruling is. Uh, Congress's intent to exclude model aircraft from future regulation. The FAA feels that any part of its existing regulations may apply to model aircraft operations depending on the particular circumstances. That means the agency is poised to arbitrarily tell hobbyists what conduct may be subject to fines, but only after. The fact. This is so, what happens. Wow. This is what happens in the realm of mission creep, right? So, like nobody imagined for one second when they created the Federal Aviation Administration to sort of make sure that airplanes didn't run into each other in the sky, that uh, that we would have to get together to decide who can, uh, you know, uh, who can throw a paper airplane and win. That they didn't think that. So now that we have these little remote control helicopters that go up, and that any of us can put them up there the faa says whoa 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 we run the sky right. and you don't go in the sky without our permission and so they're making the rules now congress hasn't gotten together and said well yep we're gonna have to control drones not that i think congress like 435 drunken crooks uh d deserves to tell us what we can do with our remote control airplanes and what they can't but they didn't right this is just a bunch of federal bureaucrats saying, yeah, well, um, we've got to control this. And that's wrong. That's yeah. not what, that's not even the concept of what we, we were taught in civics class. Yeah, well, and it's interesting, too, because this legislation essentially leaves it really broad as to whether or not you can have a drone. And so they can move the goalpost yeah, on sure. you at any given time and find you after the fact. And there's no clear way... By this, you know, by what Congress is doing here, there's no clear way to know if you're even doing anything wrong. You can't know. The law is too broad. Welcome yeah, to my life. This is what the this is what it's like for any radio broadcaster. If you come out of your mouth and uh, you know say something, it can be years down the line before they find an affiliate. Yeah, uh, and the banking system too. If you withdraw too much money or you receive too much money, what who knows what too much is. Uh, or too many bitcoins or whatever, you sell some bitcoins through Coinbase, you could be facing some kind of trouble or at least intrusive questions about it. it that's It's just this mentality that creates this constant state of fear. I think they, they want people to live in this constant state of fear, not knowing whether they're sure. doing anything wrong. It's chilling. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a chilling effect. It leads to self-censorship. It leads to... Um, self-doubt you know like because you never know what the rules are so how can you know if you're breaking the rules yeah and i think there's another part of it that's even worse and that is that this is a case where government not just doesn't just have the monopoly on force now they're getting the monopoly on technology okay meaning that they can they can say who can have a drone and at the way this legislation is going it's saying only the government can have this technology so who gets to watch the watchers you know, exactly. we had a caller earlier who made a great point saying that, hey, you know, this stuff can watch you from, you know, however far in the sky, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, can we do that to the public officials who actually are asking by being public officials to be on camera? Uh, no, we can't, according to the FAA. That's no. not possible. Based and on laws that are that are far beyond, you know, from from a day that, that drones perhaps maybe not were even thought of. 
they can build facial recognition databases of yeah. us, but we can't build facial recognition databases sure. of them. Or at least when the drones were a twinkle in DARPA's eye, I suppose. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, it really, it raises, it's interesting because I think... It can seem very dire in one aspect, but at the same aspect, it's important to keep in mind that like the idea of the U.S. government having drones in the first place is a large part of a very old plan. And that old plan is air superiority, which has been around for 100 years. You know, that that is the dream. The thing is, is it's never been able to work. It's never like there is. And in fact, it's happening, you know, with drones, military drones in this case. OK. Um, and that's another reason I wish people would be more vocal about what they do with drones to say, no, this can be used for peace. And so that way we can think about that instead of constantly thinking of drones or using drones as killing machines overseas. Um, but I, I think that's the thing that people need to keep in mind, that even so that they're they're legislating that only the government can use drones, the government has never been able to successfully implement air superiority in history ever. And, uh, you know, and I can I can say, honestly, even when I was when, you know, when I was uh, in the military overseas, um, airstrikes were not that, you know, it wasn't like that surefire of a way of, of accomplishing a goal. Uh, so, you know, this this air superiority thing, especially, you know, now to do it without uh, without having a person in the cockpit, which is an even tastier thing, uh, I think makes it at the end of the day far less efficient. Mm, yeah, I mean, that. I'm sure the military loves that because it just depersonalizes the killing. It removes the responsibility from the person who's operating that that drone. Oh yeah, yeah. And the well, way but, it's it's usually not just one person operating a drone either, but that's changing. Normally, it's like three people operating. Oh, so it. then there's an, an additional layer of responsibility denial. Yeah. Well, there's an additional layer of separation from what's happening. Yeah, is what it is. And yeah. it's interesting how upset the uh, people in America have become over the beheadings that have gone on in the Middle East uh, done by ISIS. And they're certainly brutal and awful, but it's, you know, like <laughs> the hundreds of people, the hundreds of innocent people as looked at by, I can't remember which British newspaper it was, but, uh, you know, a relatively prominent British newspaper looked at it and said that 49 out of 50 people killed by drones, and this was two years ago that this article came out, uh, were innocent. These were, you know, not the target. And so they're killing 98% of the people they were killing. And I don't know whether they had their heads on after they were dead or not, if they were blown up by a Hellfire missile. These are women and children in this circumstance. Yeah. So far, everybody who's had their head lopped off on camera by ISIS has been a male. I don't know that that matters or doesn't matter. It depends on what your thoughts are on that subject. But it's... I'm reasonably certain that these, you know, five-year-olds weren't doing anything to uh, to terrorize anybody, and Americans are upset about a small handful of uh, journalists and aid workers that have had their heads cut off. Yeah, and the excuse is slim that, you know, that that those deaths were unavoidable. That when I like I said, there's multi-person teams that control one drone. One of those guys, it's usually a three-man team. Sometimes it's more. One of those guys is supposed to be is is supposed to be like target recognition, like setting up who the target is. You've got one guy. That's all he does. He doesn't fly it. He doesn't have to worry about that aspect. He just needs to find who to hit. And that one guy clearly sucks at his job every day. Mm. What do you think? Are all are drones all bad, or could there be pro-freedom uses of drones? Are you opposed to all of them? Let us know what you think. 855-450-FREE here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. 855-450-3733. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's antiwar.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 17th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,240, silver around $17.36, and Bitcoin is trading around $383. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has warned that extreme quarantine measures for Ebola patients could violate human rights and discourage reporting of the illness. Saeed Rayad al-Hussein said issuing criminal penalties for those who don't report is very likely to backfire by driving the epidemic underground. The statements came as President Obama issued an executive order that will allow the Pentagon to make use of reserve troops to tackle Ebola in Africa. There are no immediate plans to send the reservists or the National Guard to the continent, but the military maintains the option to do so. Researchers with the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies have raised nearly $142,000 for a study of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans. MAPS ran an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign asking supporters to donate towards covering the cost of a new study in Boulder, Colorado. A recently published study found that 83% of those who experienced MDMA-assisted therapy were no longer diagnosed with PTSD and had significant improvements. MAPS is working to legalize MDMA research by 2021. A controversial national park in Tanzania has been the subject of protest by the Uvinji community. The small coastal fishing community is comprised of only 130 people, but their cause has received international attention after their land was included in a new map for a game reserve. The Tanzania National Parks Authority is attempting to drive the community out of the reserve, which now includes their land. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from Be The Media, a workshop, mini-conference, and party exploring alternative media and celebrating the launch of the Liberty Beat GCN partnership. It happens Saturday, October 25th, and will be live streamed at thelibertybeat.com. Be the media and change the world. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 16th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. And make sure you like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. One year in the House of Corrections suspended on good behavior for one year and 100 hours of community service. That's the sentence handed down Thursday to the host of the nationally syndicated Free Talk Live radio program. Ian Freeman's sentence was decided by Keene, New Hampshire Superior Court Judge Edward Burke, arising from the charges of unsworn falsification and prohibition. The charges stem from an arrest in April of this year and were based on the state's claim that Freeman failed to file the proper paperwork in order to use the name Ian Freeman for his New Hampshire driver's license. Freeman's given birth name is Bernard. Freeman's show co-host of 12 years, Mark Edge, provided character testimony, telling the court that Freeman would not learn from being locked in a cage and has, through Edge's influence, recently toned down his controversial civil disobedience activism. Freeman told the Liberty Bean he's thankful that he's not going to jail and that a suspended one-year jail sentence is a hefty price to pay for getting a name change. 
The state prosecutor had recommended a sentence of 60 days in jail. The Free Barrett Brown Organization is asking supporters of the jailed journalist to mail letters to the judge that will sentence him on November 24th. The organization is asking for sympathetic letters detailing Barrett's contributions to be mailed to Judge Lindsay. Barrett Brown has been behind bars for over two years, a portion of which was spent bound by a gag order. He was originally accused of sharing a hyperlink to stolen data, hiding laptops, and threatening a federal agent. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 17th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Following today's press conference in which NASA announced its continuing search for a planet capable of supporting NASA, researcher Dr. Kenneth Heiser sat down with Onion reporters to detail their ongoing mission to find a NASA habitable planet. Our objective is to find a planet capable of nurturing not just life, but also a sustained interest in the exploration of the cosmos. Uh, such a planet would need to have water and proximity to light and heat, but also life forms with even the vaguest understanding of the importance of astronomical exploration. Ultimately, this would need to be a planet with organisms that have a genuine interest in expanding the limits of their knowledge. Heiser added that any planet capable of supporting NASA would need to be able to generate a steady stream of financing to meet the agency's $18 billion annual budget. The important thing is we just need to be patient. There's a limitless number of planets in the universe and eventually we'll find one with the resources to support our work. We just have to, right? This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. The live Sunday night show. This is the third hour of tonight's program. You're with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And please, you can call us and bring up anything that's on your mind tonight. We've been talking about drones, how to get through to Republicans, and the pumpkin fest conspiracy theory. Uh, but if you have a different conspiracy theory that you want to talk about, about pumpkin fest or Anything else really that's on your mind, you can call us at 855-450-3733. As soon as I said that, I sort of regretted it because this is not a conspiracy theory <laughs> show or anything like that. Uh, we just like to talk about interesting topics. So, Well, as the night goes on, it might be. <laughs> if you have something you want to share with us, 855-450-3733. The Pro-XPN toll-free call-in lines. One more time, 855-450-FREE or on Skype, lrn.fm. Well, I think we're going to have to talk about the Talmud, Mark. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit interesting. Yeah, this is... A, <laughs> oh, so I saw this meme on Facebook, right? And then I began to look into it because, folks, don't believe everything you read in a meme on Facebook. I've been caught dozens of times, and I don't want to get caught anymore, so I tend to look. Well, I agree. Okay, because I remember there was a meme that said the same thing, that Benjamin Franklin said, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. The point. Yep. So, I saw this meme, and it was uh, two pictures of the Talmud and the Quran, and it says at the top here, Talmud says Jesus is boiling in semen in hell, and that the Virgin Mary is a whore. Quran Jesus is the most quoted prophet, and Mary is the most holy woman in this book. Guess which one modern Christians support? And this, if it was a true statement, would be a pretty poignant statement, right? Like this would be prescient. It's actually almost uh, shocking, I would think, to people who have this mainstream view of religion. Well, yeah. I suppose a lot of people, I think everybody knows that the Quran is because it's so heavily demonized. Uh, in the United States, but I do wonder if everybody knows what the Talmud 
is. I don't know it other than a, relig- a Jewish religious document. That's right. all. That's all I can say. Yeah, pretty what much. What is the Talmud? Yeah, I'll, I'll give a little a little background on what the Talmud is, and uh, I, I I'm not making an appeal from authority, but I am uh, genetically, ethnically, I am a Kohanim, which means that I'm a Jew of the tribe of Levi, a descendant How of do you Aaron. Know? Uh, you have a family, you have this really awesome family tree. Okay. That's, that's pretty much it. And All right. So you're like a special breed of Jew, basically. Right. Yeah. I'm <laughs> oh like, I, yeah. In chosen people, there's like even layers within that. That, I, anyway, never mind. So it, it's all silly. It, it's all it's all crazy. Me. So, but, but I'm just but saying you have studied Judaism and yeah, religion. Yeah, I was raised with it extensively, as well sure. as Christianity, right? Right. So it's important to understand that what you know, the, what the Christians call the Old Testament in Judaism is called Torah. But Torah usually isn't just the Old Testament. It's often what the phrase will be. They'll call it Talmud Torah. Okay, and that's because the Talmud, which is a text written. Uh, decently after the Torah was compiled or the Old Testament was compiled, uh, you know, is is considered so authoritative that it's combined with it and that you can't understand one without the other. Because in Judaism, you have the oral Torah and you have the written Torah. Okay, and the Talmud, you know, now the oral Torah is this what was supposedly said to Moses that never got written down, but it allows you to understand the written Torah, which is the Old Testament that everybody knows. I hope everybody's still with me. Okay, Um, and the oral Torah, right? The oral Torah, and so at one point, that's like the rural juror. Sure, at one point, (laughs) the most, you know, uh, the most ironic thing occurred that a bunch of rabbis actually wrote down the oral Torah, which they weren't supposed to do, but they did. It's the Mishnah. Why wouldn't they? And they put it (laughs) right, exactly. And so, and so, then they put this into this is like what the first half of the Talmud is. Okay, so the Talmud is as holy as Torah. Pretty much. So if you want to understand the scale of which, like, you can't just write it off and say, well, that book doesn't matter. No, to the people that follow the Old Testament and the Old Testament alone, uh, unless you are a, um, a Kyrite Jew, you, you're this is as important as, as the Old Testament. Now, what's a Kyrite Jew? A Kyrite Jew is a, that is a sect of Judaism that does not believe in rabbinicism. Uh, they don't believe in, you know, they don't believe in, in the Talmud. They just think that all you have is the Torah. There's no oral Torah. You've just got the Old Testament. And that's all you've got. Got it. Yeah. So they're very different. Um, and they, that didn't even touch on the Noahides. Noahide is just, that's, that's what Gentiles need to do. That's a whole other ball game. Got it. They have like seven laws they have to follow. So anyway, so the wow. Talmud is incredibly important. Uh, and in fact, or just another quick, you know, kind of side note on it is that it there are actually two of them. Usually when you hear the word Talmud, it's referencing the Bab- Babylonian Talmud, but there is also a Jerusalem Talmud that has not really been researched very well. But so it's not just one book. So you got to keep that in mind, too. OK, That's, so what's... is that the Assyrian Talmud? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, but normally it'll go by the name of Jerusalem Talmud. Okay. So um, what's the difference between the two of them? Uh, I don't know the Jerusalem Talmud that well, so okay. but the Babylonian Talmud. Uh, see, the Talmud is a large part. It's, it's the Mishnah, but it's also a collection of question and answer sessions. It's a bunch of Q and A with rabbis. Okay. okay, so this is just two, this might be just two different versions of the same. Yeah, stuff? It's, it's two different schools. So Got it's it. not. It wouldn't really be the same stuff necessarily, but it's two different schools of these rabbis arguing with each other. And I think that's important to consider for starters with this statement is that you have the, these books are just full of questions and not necessarily full of answers. And so, you know, what what one person says about what was the quote again about about Yeshua? Um, well, that's a, that brings up a very important part of it to to me because they say Jesus in here. But anyway, by, it says by the way, uh, he's boiling case, in semen in hell. In case you're just joining us, this is not a religious talk show. Right. We are just talking about a meme that Mark saw on Facebook with yeah. someone who happens to have a a very extensive unofficial study of uh, religion. Right, and in this meme, it says uh, according to the the Talmud, it's comparing the Talmud and the Quran. And it says the, and the Talmud says that Jesus is boiling in semen in hell, and that the Virgin Mary is a whore, whereas as and the tra- Quran says that Jesus is the most quoted prophet and Mary is the most holy woman mentioned in the book. Okay. And uh, then at the bottom it says, guess which one modern Christians support? And I think that it's very interesting to look at. I'm not saying that, look, everybody on this show is uh, to some one, some extent or another ethnically Jewish. I'm not looking to get burned at the stake by a bunch of modern uh, you know, Nazis who have decided that, uh, that Jews are responsible for the crucifixion of Christ. It's ridiculous. However, um, I think that it's 
interesting that uh, Christians today, oftentimes, it's sort of, uh, you know, just your average Christian is pretty scared of Islam, but the Quran is pretty nice to Jesus. Now, are they just picking out a quote there to kind of prove their point, or is the okay, whole Okay, well, why would the Talmud say anything good about Jesus? Well, all right, but he, here's, first off, this is the second part, is that Jesus' name isn't Jesus. Right, it's, that's really important. Yeah, it's, it's Yeshua, okay, which means Joshua, so it should actually be translated as Joshua, okay? Uh, but to confuse the Greek names and the King James Version, everybody came to kind of know him as as, uh, as Jesus to differentiate him from yep. Joshua. It's Yashua, in, in Yeshua the, ben Yosef of Nazareth, right? Sure, yeah, so... You, the, here's the thing, though, is that Yeshua is clearly just because of that name delineation that even Christians knew needed to be done between Joshua of the Old Testament and Jesus of the New Testament. Yeshua is a really common name, especially at this time, for Jews. So it's really unclear that the Talmud is referencing. But there's some context to it, though. Um, when, when I was reading this, uh, it's coming from uh, Wikipedia here. Um, I'm uh, actually trying to find it. Well, context, you know, regardless, even if it's talking about him, you have some other issues, okay? And that is that we, you have Christianity, especially after the 4th century and Constantine the Great took over, okay? He, I mean, Christianity became the law of the empire, okay? You had to be a Christian. And so Christians got pretty gutsy, pretty ballsy, and started forcing themselves upon the other faiths around town, and that included Judaism. And so you get around in the 6th century, where suddenly uh, the Christians start asking about th these verses in the Talmud, and then they start editing it. And so it's even debatable if the Babylonian Talmud we have now is accurately depicting what was, you know, what what uh, what was originally written down. And with that in mind, you have to wonder if the Christians put in slanderous stuff just to demonize the Jews, just like they do uh, with the Quran today. So it's it's questionable if what you have now is even a completely rabbinic text. It could be Christian in itself. Wow, this is a rabbit hole that I didn't expect to go down. 855 450 free. What do you think? This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Delighted health insurance executives gather in an outdoor coliseum to watch a patient battle cancer. And a self-conscious flasher is fully clothed under his trench coat. This is the Onion Week in Review. While stressing that they would absolutely never consider doing anything of the sort, German leaders quietly admitted this week that they were pretty sure they could carry out another holocaust if they ever truly wanted to. 
quickly noting that the Holocaust was an atrocity that should never be repeated, no matter how easy it would be to do so, almost all members of the German parliament discreetly conceded that with their country's dominance of Eurozone GDP, pulling off the unthinkable genocide would not be the least bit difficult. I'm just saying, hypothetically, that we very easily could do it. I mean, we definitely have the infrastructure, and the concentration camps are still standing. In other news, a so-called Christian has an erection. A new study finds more children are growing up in single-parent households. And a real-life Nancy Drew traces the source of her HPV. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 this is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. This is the Live Sunday Show. And you're with Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733. That is our number here on Free Talk Live, where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind. It's 855-450-FREE, the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines, 855-450-3733. And, boy, if you are concerned about your privacy, we already talked about, of course, those uh, lines are the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines. Pro XPN is a good start to get a VPN to take take care of that privacy, but there's so much more to do. And fortunately, I am so happy to say that there are people working hard, getting together to make this happen, and you can join them. You can go to Hack the Trackers, uh, and this is November 7th to November 8th in New York City. Uh, it's being put on by Ghostery, which is a great extension uh, to get your hands on if you want more privacy. Ghostery is awesome. That's, I know it's available for Firefox and uh, and Chrome. Uh, also, DuckDuckGo is supporting this. DuckDuckGo is the alternative to Google as far as search engine goes. Okay, But you can get together with these people. They're going to be creating tools that make the web a more transparent place. Uh, or you, know, you can help users uh, manage how much data they share. I mean, this is the real deal. This is the kind of stuff people need to be supporting, these kind of gatherings like Hack the Trackers. And, uh, oh, I bet you'd meet some fascinating people there. Oh, absolutely. And the hacks will be judged by experts and voted on uh, by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package, including the all-new black phone made by uh, Phil Zimmerman, who created PGP. Uh, it's really it's something you want to get your hands on. So participation is free. Registration's open now. You can go to hackthetrackers.com to get more information on that. I am so excited about this. Ought to be fun. So I guess what we're talking about here is the uh, this meme that I saw on Facebook. Yes. And it's uh, it's really kind of interesting. Um, it, what it does is it's it's comparing um, the Talmud and the Quran. And, uh, you know, I never really spent much time thinking about the Talmud, but it's uh, in, in comparison to the, um, the, the Quran here, it's saying that the, the Talmud has uh, Jesus being boiled in semen and calling Mary a whore. And the Quran claims that, uh, you know, that Jesus is the most quoted of the prophets and that uh, Mary is a revered woman. So and then they say, which one do you think that modern Christians support? And What's the agenda of the person who produced that meme? Yes, it- that's clear. What is the agenda? Yeah. Well, oh, I, I mean, don't know. Who, who produced the meme? 
It seems it there it's it's just it's one of those memes. Yeah, it's an anonymous meme. So doesn't it get shared by some page or something like that? Or I, I mean, didn't track it all the way back. All I saw was the guy that uh, uh, shared it. Uh, well, has for future a propensity for uh, conspiracy theories. Okay. Well, all you meme generators out there, just a just a uh, pro tip. You know, if you think your meme's going to go viral, put your information in the picture so that people can find well, your website or whatever. Yeah, but, if you want to be but, found, but this right, unless they don't. you want to just push like kind of what may be anti-Semitic. Uh, nonsense, you know, going around. Yeah, or is I can see why someone wouldn't want to be tracked. <laughs> or is it pro-Muslim? I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't have many answers to this. For me, what it would Personally, be, what I, don't what care. I read it, what I say is, is that I, I'm not looking for any particular religion. I'm scared of the anti-Muslim fervor that goes on in this country. Sure, I'm a little concerned with uh, with the way Muslims act in the Middle East too. But I've come to the conclusion in my life that. It's probably a reaction to the fact that the West has been interfering since the the fall of the Ottoman Empire and even before that in um, the Middle East. So this region has never had a chance to come to equilibrium. And then they throw in this... Uh, the, the this Jewish state in the middle of it and expect everything to go well and it certainly hasn't. I'm not saying that I, I think you know people that own property in Israel deserve to be whole and safe in their property. I'm not claiming that. I'm just saying, hey, everybody settle down about all your, you know, religious texts. <laughs> just settle down about it. Because yeah. you probably don't know everything. And this is interesting that the Talmud, uh, where, you know, so many modern Christians would say, yeah, the Jews are the good guys and the Arabs are the bad guys. Well, the Talmud's got Jesus boiling in. Uh, actually, I've got the from Wikipedia here. It's wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Jesus in the Talmud. And this quote here is, it's long and it doesn't make much sense, but I can start it and try to give you some idea. And uh, remember, well, we, this sounds like a religious text. So we it's do have really some calls awful. on the line. But yeah, what is the okay, quote? Well, let's take the no, let's take the, the calls because it's it's a mess. <laughs> Well, if someone was uh, boiling in excrement, it probably would be a mess. But anyway, let's talk to Steve in Iowa. Hey, Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Hi. Um, I, I wanted to talk about the uh, late ban that they were discussing and the president and the Congress and all that was going to uh, decide whether they wanted to stop it. And my point is... Are you talking about in response to... Because they're concerned about Ebola, they w they're going to block flights to West Africa or from West Africa. Yes, okay. exactly. And and my point is, there's about 150 to 200 people coming in every day from the three countries. That's kind of the figures I've heard. And what what I find so surprising is right now I'm driving, uh, I'm heading to Cleveland, and I heard on the radio that they had that drove into Atlanta and Cleveland and all that kind of stuff. And typically what I do is I go to Cleveland. I fly down to Florida. The other part of my business is down there. I'm seriously considering driving down, like trying to set up appointments on the way down. Normally I would never do that. Now, what I'm thinking is you've got 150 to 200 people coming in here, and they're doing this every day, multiply it by a week. But multiply the people like me who are changing their plans and who are disrupting their life just because we're not stopping the, the people coming in. It, it, it yeah. seems absurd. Well, how do you, how would you even, I mean, stopping people from coming into the country? That seems pretty difficult to do. And who are you going to stop coming in? Are you just talking about non-citizens or citizens too? Are you going to shut down the country for the next month? And everybody who happens to be abroad doesn't get to go come back? And what are the legal ramifications of keeping a, a U.S. citizen out of the country over a disease at this point, which is about 60,000 times less deadly than the flu? Well, I think the first thing that they should do is... Um you know, stop giving out visas. Like you, I think you can still get a visa right now from one of those three nations. To come Isn't to it America. really hard to get a visa? I don't think it's that difficult. People are doing it. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't tried to do it lately, but 
you know, I, I've heard, heard stories definitely of people who try to go the legal route and get the visa and they just have I'm willing time. to bet that there, there's somebody sitting at the Immigration and Naturalization Services or whatever um, sitting on those visas and that none of them are getting approved right now. I mean, I'm just willing to bet. I don't I think that they are probably not going to come out and say that they're oh, yeah, we're approving Liberian visas all over the place. Uh, but. So there was an Ebola outbreak in Zaire um, in the 90s, wasn't there? And people were still flying then. I mean, it didn't it basically just fizzle out? Are you talking to me? I, I don't oh. know about that. Okay. Yes, there was. I, I'm just saying, the guy that, the guy that came over, um, Mr. Duncan, mm-hmm. uh, he was one person. And what, what I'm saying is look at what he's created. Yeah, I mean, it's a little Every bit- year there's some kerfuffle about uh, you know medicine. It's if it's not SARS, it's H1N1, it's mad cow. I mean, there's always some thing that doesn't amount Thanks to much. Thanks for the call, Steve. This is Free Talk Live. There's more coming up here on the show. 855-450 free. Are you scared? I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying 
the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. We're so glad you're joining us. The number to call is 855-450-3733. You can bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. One more time, 855-450-3733. Those are, of course, the Pro XPN toll-free call-in lines. And by the way, if you want to connect with us on social media, uh, Mark was just talking about Free Talk Live's Facebook page just recently, um, or you want to get on our email list, you can find all of that stuff at news.freetalklive.com. Great way to connect with the show. And we do share updates during the show on things that we're uh, speaking about live on the show as well as throughout the week. ExpressCoin.com is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Whether you want to get Bitcoin, and now I think is a great time to get Bitcoin. I haven't been paying atten- much attention to the other uh, altcoins, as they're called, but they do have Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with a money order, check, or wire transfer. And I think this is the best option, is you can make a deposit at a local credit union somewhere near you as long as they have shared branching, and get your cryptocurrency within a business day. That's fast, and I don't know how many places you can get it faster than that. Um, just go to ExpressCoin.com if you're in the U.S. or Canada. You can do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get $40 worth of your cryptocurrency, all at no fee, up to $40 worth, no fee. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. All right, let's go to the phones and talk to Pat in Iowa. Hi, Pat, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? In your discussion of the Talmud and the Quran, and I just had a, I think the important thing to take away from that meme is not, you know, hopefully not any kind of anti-Semitism, because obviously it should be discarded, but that there's just not really a good reason for this disparity in our uh, the Western thought of Muslims and the Jews. We seem to have this ally feeling, this solidarity with, uh, with you know Jewishness and the Talmud, yet we seem to have this fear of uh, Islam. Yet Islam may be more ideologically consistent with us, and it's just very interesting. I think. Uh, yeah, I mean it. It is, I guess, may, maybe made to make you think. Who do you think? Who do you think produced that meme? Like, if you had to guess at the origins of it, <laughs> who do you think made it? I mean, I mean, likely. Uh, I mean, a Muslim, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we should uh, discard it. I think they just don't really understand the, the reason that we seem to have this fear of Islam in the West. It may not be a fear, but we definitely don't feel the kind of solidarity that we do with, uh, with Judaism, you know? Like, you definitely don't, definitely don't see that. Yeah, I wonder I mean, why that I is. I mean, we is a generalization, but yeah, I get it's a what generalization. You're uh, it, it it rings true for me. I was raised goy and only recently found out through some genetic test that I've got that I qualify as a Jew because uh, the matriarchal line in my family happens to be uh, Ashkenazi. Um, I you know I had no relationship to this. To the to me, Jews are still them, not we. Uh, but <laughs> I like them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. It, you, when you zoom out on the big uh, picture, you know, maybe everybody has uh, personal religious beliefs, but uh, there's enough group fighting in the world. Like, can't we all just get along? <laughs> I hate to say it like that. Final thoughts, Pat? Uh, just that there's just not a lot to back up this feeling of difference from Islam. And it's actually a lot I, you know, closer to us than we really think. And yet we still just seem to think that they are vastly different than us. Very very unnecessarily, I think. Yep, I hear you. Thanks for the call tonight, Pat. Let's talk to Sam in Indiana. Hi, Sam. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Um, I wanted to call and ask you guys where you thought 
uh, not the last caller, but the one before that, the one before the break, um, where do you think he's getting all of his um, his fear of Ebola from? Because I, even though I live in southern Indiana, which tends to be extremely conservative, I've managed to become very liberal going to a college and getting my media online and stuff. And I have only heard people talking about how it's not dangerous. Ebola. Oh, well, I, I, there's absolutely it's going on out there where uh, politicians are grandstanding on this one and saying, you know, we need to shut the borders. Consider for a second that an election's coming up and that everything that goes wrong in this country is the fault of the president and that every president that has had a second term in my lifetime, that second term has always had a scandal somewhere around year six. For Clinton, it was year five. Um, and that that is a huge lever, a crowbar that can be used by the all, the other party to kind of, uh, you know, create fear, FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. And that's really important in an election period because. So what's Obama's scandal? Well, he's got well, he's got a line of scandals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between the IRS targeting, uh, you know, uh, political groups, uh, the drones. Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Yeah, Benghazi. Um, that's a a big one. Yeah, too. I was kind of asking because I couldn't just focus on one. I mean, <laughs> there's so many of them. But you know, if if you can create fear and upset, then people are more likely to vote for the other party. People tend to run home to to, to mommy when they uh, when when things are going bad in their life, and that's what the Republicans are hoping for. Yeah, you know, I was just when when we, Brian and I were driving to the studio tonight, we passed by a billboard that said "Protect your family, close the borders, vote Republican." Yes. <laughs> oh man, oh. drove by that like, near my house. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Um, so yeah, they definitely do play oh. off of people's fears, but on the other hand, like there's. There are confusing messages about Ebola in the media, right? Like, on one hand, they're reporting all these outbreaks and people are getting infected and, you know, the nurses are saying they didn't have the proper protective equipment. But then, on the other hand, there are CDC people coming out and other media reporting, oh, well, it's not very contagious. You can't get it unless someone vomits on you and sprays you with blood. It's not airborne and so forth. And People don't know what to believe. They're they're probably confused, and that doesn't lead to a feeling of uh, a sense of security. I would imagine. Okay, but it's not it's not the libertarians. It's not. Is this a Tea Party thing or is this a Republican thing? I I know that the two mix a lot, but I didn't know if this was just like Fox News's personal movement or if there were a lot of media outlets that I don't listen to or pay attention to that were pumping the same fear into the public. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, um, I, I can't don't pay much attention. I don't pay myself. as much attention to Repu that much attention to Republican media because I don't report on it. Um, uh, it's it's not my goal to debunk uh, Fox News because I would have to spend, in my opinion, as much time trying to debunk MSN, which is just as bad um, to, to my mind. So, I think that this is going to be used by anybody who wants to shut the borders has a feeling of xenophobia, is just a uh, you know, proclivity towards fear. Um, or, or who it, wants to get money for the CDC. And or, who wants to get the Democrats out. Yeah. It's just overall, I think. I mean, aren't voting numbers way down, if I'm not mistaken? Well, the most votes that were um, recorded were for Obama, I think, in his first, maybe his second election. I well, you just you got to keep coming up with reasons to get people to, to care about the system, you know, and, and I, I think that goes bipartisan. Yeah, I think that may be it. Thanks, Sam, for the call tonight. Stay safe out there, of course, everybody. Leo is listening in North Carolina. Hi, Leo. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you doing? Doing well tonight. Well, um, I'm not really sure. Where are you guys sitting on on the fence of bipartisanship here? Are you on the progressive side or on the liberals or on the uh, conservative side? We are like floating outside of the box. Where <laughs> I don't consider, well, you have I three, don't consider myself uh, either. Yeah, there's three different people here, so you might okay. get three different answers. But I mean, myself, I well, uh, have no partisanship at all. Yeah. Okay, I only just tuned into this this part of the program. I'm I'm listening to a more conservative radio station here in Asheville. Oh, um, so, but yeah, I like I like to sit on more of the constitutional side of things and maybe the most 
more logical side of things. So what <laughs> well, I, like I used to call myself a constitutionalist at one point in my life. Um, I kind of moved beyond that when I read some of uh, Lysander Spooner. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he was an abolitionist, and um, and in the 1870s he uh, mm-hmm. corresponded a great deal with uh, Grover Cleveland. And one of, I, I think, a, a very prescient uh, quote from him is is that the, the, the Constitution has either authorized the government we have or has been uh, powerless to prevent it. And I think that even more today, that is a very um, important statement. Leo, hold that thought. I know you had more to say. Uh, we'll get into that here in moments on Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. Last segment's coming up. Time to squeeze in your calls if you make them. 855-450-FREE here on the Sunday Show, Free Talk Live. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. 
What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. Only moments remain. So if you want to take advantage of our uh, open phones policy where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind, the way to do that is by dialing 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call in line, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. So here on Free Talk Live, we talk about uh, currencies that have value on them. And and the one that's the oldest out there is metal, uh, silver, gold. These have been used for currency for thousands of years. And if you want to get some gold and silver as either a hedge against inflation or a barter currency in case things go poorly or as some kind of investment, it seems like silver is really poised to go up upward here. It's been as high as $50 and uh, recently, it was a seventeen fifty when I looked. So, probably a good idea to buy now. Um, it's hard to believe that it will ever go this low again. But I've said that before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can just go to gold.freetalklive.com, get some great rates on some great coins, either gold or silver, and help Free Talk Live and our syndicate Genesis Communications Network in the process. It's gold.freetalklive.com. All right. And by the way, tonight you're joined by me, Stephanie, and Brian, and Mark. All right, let's go back to Leo listening in North Carolina. Hey, Leo, so you had just called and you were kind of feeling us out as to where we are in the partisan spectrum. And we, all three of us tonight, I think, kind of maybe consider ourselves a little bit outside of the spectrum (laughs) or not, definitely not on either side of it. But what else did you want to uh, talk about tonight? Well, I'm glad you guys are not contained within the box. But really, what I want to talk about was, uh, you know, this whole Ebola thing. You know, we got the, the right right side saying, oh, my God, let's close the borders, and the, and the left side being like, what's the big deal? You know, um, but – and then we look at the lack of response by the CDC and our and our uh, POTUS and all this. Well, you know, I think about it, and I've done, done the research, you know, at the low deaths are 4,000, a little under, up to 42,000, and this is per year for the influenza virus, you know. We're not freaked out about influenza, except for, you know, H1N1 and all this crap. But uh, anyway. Which, yeah, there, you know, the last it, time there was a big flu scare, it turned out that that strain of the flu was less deadly than the normal flu. Right. People were crazy about the swine flu. Right. A couple of years ago, back in I think it was like 2009. Yeah. And it turned out to be less deadly than the seasonal flu that year. So that was kind of a flop. Yeah. Go get go get your vaccinations. You'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. You know, but that, that's a bunch, bunch of crap, in my opinion. But. You know, it's amazing how much this vaccination thing gets pushed. Like, there's stores giving you discounts now if you go get your vaccination. Like, it is, it's yeah. a little strange just how hard that's getting pushed. Yeah. In fact, um, you know, I definitely have some skepticism about that, about the flu vaccines. I mean, they're, if you look at how effective they are at actually stopping, preventing you from getting the flu, uh, they're like, they give you like maybe 30 to 60% protection, but it's different every year. And uh, they're guessing on the flu vaccine. Yeah, yeah if they they're producing a new vaccine or something worse than that, you know. Sorry, what was that? There's a lot of things. I said, or they give you Julian Barr syndrome or something to that effect. Oh, <laughs> Guillain know, Barre. Yeah, that was with the uh, swine flu vaccine in the 1970s, where a bunch of people got paralyzed and some died. Yeah, there, there's always risks yeah. with vaccines, and every medical not... procedure has risks, Absolutely. and that's why I, <laughs> you know, let's let's take very seriously the medical procedures that we get. Right on. So, so what do you think about Ebola? Are you kind of skeptical that it's actually as scary as people are saying? Well, I think that it, it could get extremely bad, or it could be nothing. You know, just like the statistics that I I, I mentioned. Mm. You know, there's there's a lot of people who die, and and in West Africa, you know, eight thousand people have gotten it, four thousand people have died. That's that's still, I mean, since March, that's not a high amount of people roughly compared to every year the swine not the swine flu just the flu in general yeah uh you know kill so should we be worried about it yes but but the thing that i'm i'm looking at is that as well adolf hitler said was the best way to get to control the people is through the fear of sudden death 
So we, we're sitting here clamoring all about, hey, close the borders, this, that, and the other thing. Well, I think they'll oblige at, at some point. And are we going to like it then? Do we trade uh, liberties for security in order to have none? Mm. Is kind of what I'm thinking with the whole thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what always seems to happen. Whenever you exchange yourself some liberty, then for some protection, you get neither of them. Yeah, I hear you, Leo. And thanks for the call tonight. I'm glad you're out there listening. I. I mean, what is scarier, the prospect of getting Ebola or the prospect of being trapped on lockdown in your own uh, country and not being able to leave if you even if you want to, right? Yeah, this is, you know, that we're, we're constantly inundated with these. Um, you know, at some point it, it was drug-resistant tuberculosis coming from the Mexicans, and we got to keep the Mexicans oh, out. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah, like years ago, everybody was concerned about that, and there yeah. were— there were rumors that there were all these, uh, you know, incurable tuberculosis. They were going to cough all over you and come to the U.S. and infect everybody. It and was a reason for locking down the border, the southern border. And didn't but, exactly work that way. You know, no. Americans, U.S. citizens have been crossing that border for years and they haven't brought back any uh, drug resistant tuberculosis. So the scare tactics often are used in order to achieve some other political goal. And, you know, this sort of Machiavellian <laughs> theory behind it. Is, is you just got to be very careful of what the media says because the media shares a goal with the government. The media generally wants you to be very, very frightened because frightened people watch TV. Wait, go, go to Florida and see when a hurricane comes and what everybody's doing. Oh, yeah. Everybody's watching the television to see where the hurricane is. Yeah. Um, okay. Scared people watch TVs. They buy newspapers. Scared people love the government. The government needs to save them. So they they really have this thing going on. Is the media and the government really work together to scare the bejesus out of you? And as long as they can do that, they've got you. They've yeah. got you buying, consuming their media, and they've got you you know, supporting their politicians. Yeah, feeling secure, I mean, it's such a basic human need. Uh, and the fact that there is such extreme monopolizing on the securing of a human being, that being governments, okay, and big ones at that, and they just seem to get bigger, not smaller, uh, is really, I mean, people should see that. Boy, that's very twisted that I don't have this many options in something that I am so concerned about, you know, being one's own well-being, that you have so few options out there, and you really do. In fact, even if you didn't think the U.S. was doing a good job of securing you, of protecting you from whatever, you know, Ebola you take, or, or you know, Mexicans, or whatever you think is a problem, okay, now, whether they are or actually not, because I, I don't think Mexicans are a problem, uh, you know, try leaving. Try going to another one of these monopolies. Have a good time with that because it's a pain in the butt to do it by the system. Uh, it's really, I mean, this shouldn't exist. This kind of control over your own security should not exist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, fear creates dependence, right? When When people feel scared, they kind of run to someone to give them that sense of security, like you said, Brian, and it's going to be either the media or the government. And actually, this is the same thing I think that religion does. You know, they they scare people with the promises of eternal damnation and then say, oh, but but we can save you. Just give us your money and your moral support and your allegiance and so forth. Sure. It's always the, we've seen this movie before, right? <laughs> and yeah. we know how it ends. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, though, you know, religion used to do a better job of, of giving you something out of the deal. Of course, they didn't really give you something out of the deal. because Get a cracker of, and some the, juice. Yeah, right. There isn't an afterlife. But they used to say, look, you do this and we'll pardon you. We'll give you, you you're going to, you know, we'll give you indulgences and you get to, you know, go to heaven instantaneously for just doing this thing. As to where the government really gives you nothing. You know, so I don't yeah. score one for religion for at least trying to, you know, incentivize you. There is no incentive uh, for government at all. The only thing they have in the, in their, you know, arsenal is fear. And boy, do they seem to be good at it, whether it's real or not, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I was just uh, looking up on Wikipedia the list of Ebola outbreaks historically. And there's been one pretty much every single year in some part of Africa. This has to be a pretty big one. Um, I mean, yeah. you know, thousands of people uh, have died, but this isn't West Africa. And there's a lot of sanitation lot options. Of that are, yeah, that people yeah. aren't living in the same conditions and sanitation options are better. And I, I don't know. I you guess know, I'm just not scared. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Just a quick funny story uh, at how well marketing can work. 
Okay, yeah. there was in the '90s there was this big deal in comic books where Superman died. It was the death of Superman. Okay, this was huge. It sold millions of copies, best-selling comic probably of all time. It was this major deal, and everybody's like, "Oh my!" I mean, and then it was in the newspapers. I remember I was a little kid and I was crying, and you know, it, it was just crazy. This hysteria over the fact that they're DC's going to kill off Superman. You know, he is going to die, and Superman's never died, and that was crap. Superman died twice a year. You know, in, in the con- like over and over and over again for decades, Superman would die. Why was this a special one? Because of all the marketing hype. And if you can do that to people on just something as unimportant as comic books, I mean, believe me, you can. When it's something far more real, it's just that much easier to scare the crap out of people over something or Absolutely. to get them to buy it. Absolutely, stay safe out there and stay stay independent too. You know, don't let the fear get you down. This is Free Talk Live. Uh, this has been Free Talk Live. You can find us at freetalklive.com. It's been Stephanie and Brian and Mark. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Talk. Ra- Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The latest episode of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 17th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,240, silver around $17.36, and Bitcoin is trading around $383. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. In the news, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has warned that extreme quarantine measures for Ebola patients could violate human rights and discourage reporting of the illness. Saeed Rayad Al Hussein said issuing criminal penalties for those who don't report is very likely to backfire by driving the epidemic underground. The statements came as President Obama issued an executive order that will allow the Pentagon to make use of reserve troops to tackle Ebola in Africa. There are no immediate plans to send the reservists or the National Guard to the continent, but the military maintains the option to do so. Researchers with the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies have raised nearly $142,000 for a study of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans. MAPS ran an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign asking supporters to donate towards covering the cost of a new study in Boulder, Colorado. A recently published study found that 83% of those who experienced MDMA-assisted therapy were no longer diagnosed with PTSD, 
and had significant improvements. MAPS is working to legalize MDMA research by 2021. A controversial national park in Tanzania has been the subject of protest by the Uvinji community. The small coastal fishing community is comprised of only 130 people, but their cause has received international attention after their land was included in a new map for a game reserve. The Tanzania National Parks Authority is attempting to drive the community out of the reserve, which now includes their land. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Be The Media, a workshop, mini-conference, and party, exploring alternative media and celebrating the launch of the Liberty Beat GCN partnership. It happens Saturday, October 25th, and will be live-streamed at TheLibertyBeat.com. Be the media and change the world. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 16th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. And make sure you like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the Liberty Beat. One year in the House of Correction suspended on good behavior for one year and 100 hours of community service. That's the sentence handed down Thursday to the host of the nationally syndicated Free Talk Live radio program. Ian Freeman's sentence was decided by Keene, New Hampshire Superior Court Judge Edward Burke, arising from the charges of unsworn falsification and prohibition. The charges stem from an arrest in April of this year and were based on the state's claim that Freeman failed to file the proper paperwork in order to use the name Ian Freeman for his New Hampshire driver's license. Freeman's given birth name is Bernard. Freeman's show co-host of 12 years, Mark Edge, provided character testimony, telling the court that Freeman would not learn from being locked in a cage and has, through Edge's influence, recently toned down his controversial civil disobedience activism. Freeman told the Liberty Bean he's thankful that he's not going to jail and that a suspended one-year jail sentence is a hefty price to pay for getting a name change. The state prosecutor had recommended a sentence of 60 days in jail. The Free Barrett Brown Organization is asking supporters of the jailed journalist to mail letters to the judge that will sentence him on November 24th. The organization is asking for sympathetic letters detailing Barrett's contributions to be mailed to Judge Lindsay. Barrett Brown has been behind bars for over two years, a portion of which was spent bound by a gag order. He was originally accused of sharing a hyperlink to stolen data, hiding laptops, and threatening a federal agent. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from Sovereign Living, a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 17th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Zoo visitors watch the mating rituals of the ice cream shop staff, and a serious co-worker puts on headphones to focus on his sandwich. Happiness is perpetually fleeting, so try to savor the next few minutes before it disappears once again. This is the Onion Week in Review. FBI officials announced they just can't bring themselves to bust a man who recently downloaded every season of the 1990s television show Picket Fences from a BitTorrent website. While stressing that pirating copyrighted material is strictly illegal, federal authorities expressed their sympathy for the man and claimed that perhaps the story of Sheriff Jimmy Brock and the strange events in a small Wisconsin town is all he has left to cling to. We have more than enough evidence to bust him for piracy, but if the poor guy really wants to watch all four seasons of a 20-year-old CBS drama that nobody remembers, He's clearly going through a pretty big rough patch right now. And frankly, we don't need to make it any worse. For statistical purposes, we have seized all private data from your personal computer and we are disgusted with your recent internet search history. You sick f For more, keep checking theonion.com. And this is Liberty Conspiracy Radio on the Liberty Radio Network. I'm Gardner Goldsmith. Nice to have you here, everybody. 